Hey, Matt. Coach. How you guys doing? Pretty good. How are you doing today? Good. Trying to figure this out. Stop and start the recording. Hi, Puddin. How you doing, Matt? Uh, I'm just staying fat. <laughs> recording. She's so polite. Cool. All right. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's listen. I like this. I like the fem, fem, uh, us being familiar with each other too. I developed that Google forms. Um, I want to get the same group of guys on here if we can. Um, and when I do other clinics with other coaches coming on, I'm going to include you guys too, along with my group of coaches. I have, I'm, I'm the president of our, the short conference association with the 43 schools. So I organize clinics within them and I'm going to start including you. you guys. Uh, I've had guys like Phil Longo talk from North Carolina. I had uh, coach Foley Ed Foley from Carolina Panthers that talked the other day. We had local head coaches in colleges. Uh, and I think the 25th, we got a guy, Chris Vassour, who's a podcast, um, big podcast guy who, um, does um, defensive coordinators he gets on his podcast, Bud Foster, um, just all the uh, the, the, the one, uh, the Michigan D coordinator with a, a Brown, um, and he's going to talk about their philosophies and all that. Questions and answers, clinic, the 25th. I'm going to send you all that information where he's doing it with that. And that's pretty cool. We got we get around 80 people on those things, um, which is pretty good. So, when we, yeah. So, that is that. All right. So I like talking um, schemes. I have many different things. I, I've been the head coach at my high school for 18 years. I just stepped down. I stepped down. I actually had um, two years ago, I got found with a widow maker that was blocked 85%. And I had, a, they went inside me and, and, and cleared it up with a stent. And the doctor wanted me to quit after uh after that happened, I refused. So the last two years, I still coached and grinded out. And I just got real tired. By the second year, which was after our COVID year, we were successful. We, I mean, we've, we've had one losing record in 11 years. And I just said to myself, my wife's telling me, you got to step down for one year. I mean, she fucking thinks you could step down and come right back. But um, I did. So I was the only coach ever at Born Again. I stepped down after, yeah, before our last game. Um, we beat a Catholic school, which I was pretty pumped. Um, and, uh, and here I am right now. So I actually have interviewed for other head coaching jobs after I got cleared, but I couldn't, I couldn't bite on it. So I want to stay in the game of football. People have asked me to be OCs or receiver coaches. I don't know if I'm ready for that. So I just want to keep doing clinics and talking football. When guys call me up and say, Hey, can you get on, get on and, um, two o'clock, yeah, we get on, on a Google meet and we talk football like this. The greatest thing that happened during COVID, it showed that us coaches can communicate from home and we didn't need to go to a local, local rural classroom to be on the dry erase board. So we've learned to be able to communicate that way. My wife loves it. I don't need to go to meetings there. Um, when we do our short conference meetings or the state meetings, we don't have to go to Rutgers anymore. We just go on our Zoom and we get a hundred and something people on there and then we shut it off. It saves our, our cost of our car traveling and you know the burden of our families are saved that way too. So I like this, I love it. If one of you guys said, let's get, can you get on? Let's talk some football. I'll get on the Google thing and we'll talk just like this. I've talked to one coach, 10 coaches, 20. It doesn't matter. We get on there, we talk and we get stuff done. Um, and it's good. And we share clips. That's all we do. I, I, I copy and paste everybody's freaking shit. Everybody's, you know, and, and there are times I don't even know where I got it from. So, but I just know I got it from my network of people, uh, my philosophies, uh, what, I, what, what, what I've had throughout the years. So, um, you know, that's just me. So that's, if there was a, a question about why do I do these things? I do it because I love football and I like meeting people and seeing you guys familiar faces. 
um, you know, two, two days in a row or, you know, two out of the three, you know, that's me. You know, I like doing that. I like doing it. And like I said, other people want to see the clips later on. Um, that's what we do. We're just promoting the football and we're doing it from all areas of all, you know, all over the country. 73 people uh, inquired about uh, the Zoom clinics from all over the country. And it's pretty cool. Football is football. I mean, I love when people want to know who's the best state in football. I mean, I, I don't know. My buddy, um, uh, Bob, Bobby Acosta, uh, he was the IMG head football coach last year. Good friend of mine, uh, coached with me um, for a year. And we stayed tight. He's actually got one of my ex-players also with him. He moved to Del Val, Del Val in Texas. And, um, you know, he's getting the scene all over. He was at Minnesota Duluth. Uh, no, no, St. Scholastica, Minnesota. I um, mean, he's been in Syracuse. He coached in there. He's IMG, Delaware. And, and football is football. It really is. And kids are kids. They really are. So, I, I mean, I respect all areas. I know some people like to always talk about who's got better kind of football. And, and you know, I mean, how do you know? They're all good football all over the place. I just, but one thing I did learn was that different um, areas of the country, have different styles of football. They really do. You know, there's some wing T areas in, in the country where everybody's kind of doing this, spread this and that. My philosophy when I was when I started my program was I'm gonna do something that nobody else is doing. So my thing was when I started bringing in pistol and then seeing all the stuff that I do, then everybody was doing it. So I went, okay, I'm not doing pistol. I'm going to put them in left or low to right. I don't want to mimic everybody else's. I want a team to prepare for me totally different than any other week. I don't want the coordinators to copy and paste. You know, if you're playing three wing T teams on a row, I always hear, Oh, thank God. That shouldn't happen. You shouldn't be identically the same. there. You should have some type of different personality on your stuff. And that's what we do. So um, my philosophy is I'm going to be different and I'm going to have an answer for what I think is right. Maybe I'm wrong, but, you know, we, we do have an answer for it with that. So and I took a lot of people's schemes and I adapted it to me. It's not what we know. It's what the kids know. And, and that's it. I'm a special ed teacher and I keep it so, so simple. All our stuff. So let me just go on how I dummy this down for my quarterbacks, RPO. You know, I always hear coaches going, there's just too much on a plate for RPOs. And I kind of talk to people, I go, who is it confusing for it? You or the kids? You know, and then we break it down, we talk. The way I teach the RPOs, it's all segments. It's not like you're teaching everybody a whole new different scheme. You're taking receivers, you're taking quarterbacks, you're taking running backs and linemen and tight ends and teach them what they have to learn. And then you put it together. And then what you do is you teach the quarterback, you know, the certain rules and, and stuff, because they're a little different, but I teach everybody separately. When I did the COVID or football camp on COVID on the computer or our seven on sevens, I taught to just groups of people what they needed to know, get the fuck off, Next group comes on, get the hell off. Next group comes on, get the hell off. That's it. I don't like talking to my tight ends, my receivers, and my running backs at the same time because it's bullshit. They don't need to hear the depth of a drop uh, of a receiver. They don't need to know the alignment of a running back if they're a receiver. I don't, I want them only, to, I don't waste time. Just hear what you need to hear and go home. So I don't waste time. And that's how we practice too, our tempo. We do not bore the kids and we do not want to waste anybody's time. And to me, that's insulting if somebody ever said that about me. And that's how we do it. So we go fast and it's right to the point. And even with my coaches, when we have our meetings, this is what I need. After that, goodbye, you're done. Don't ever blame me for having a longer meeting at all. All right, here are the eyes of the quarterback. These are the eyes. I'm behind the quarterback in practice at times, all right? And I'll tell him, in the past, I used to tell him, hey, make sure that you kick back and throw the football. Don't don't, um, don't flash the football to the running back because he doesn't need it. I'm giving him all these little cheat codes, and, you know, and I'm saying to myself, 
I have to find a way that I could tell him that from the sideline. And what happens is the first guy kind of knows what to do. The second, third, fourth, fifth guy is freaking winging it. He's just winging it. And that's why he's second, third, fourth, fifth. So I wanted to teach where I have the eyes of our quarterback. So there are different kinds of RPOs. There are pre-snap RPOs, which mean that the quarterback knows before the ball snap, I'm fucking throwing the football. Even though the running back's going to the run, the linemen are blocking, everybody's running routes, and I know when that ball's in the air, I'm kicking back and I'm throwing it. Or I'm going to hand a ball off right away and don't worry about any of the receivers running routes. Predetermined in your head. And I gave it a color pink, pink or purple. All right. So when if they saw me scratching my wristband while I'm screaming things out, they see pink. Only the quarterback knows. Pre-snap, I know where to where, where everybody's doing. I'm get, catching it and I'm giving it to that person who I think is open. And our theory is five yards. Get me five, and we'll go over the different things quickly. We do a pre-snap where we throw a run. We do a run and a quick game and then a quick screen. <clears throat> and then we're going to go today to black, which is backside linebacker. And it's got a progression of things that are a little different um, from our pre-snap. So let's go into the stuff and then I'll get right into the black. All right. Now, here are the rules for quick screen. And again, I'm just reviewing this that we did last week. So pre-snap means that our alignment are blocking for the run. So we break this, we crop the picture like this. Crop means that these guys worry about this, these guys worry about this, these guys worry about this, and the quarterback can see the three different areas where what's going on. Everybody thinks they're getting a football. One, two, uh, and a quarterback, and the running back is three. So three, it's like triple option. So we like to run because it's behind the line of scrimmage or it's a quick throw. If a lineman goes downfield, they're not going to get hit. We like to run inside zone. We like to run um, uh, at, a, at a 20 personnel, some type of lead play, which we go zone lead, a split zone or, or power. So basically the run plays are here, nothing on the perimeter when we're going our quick game with our um, pre-snap. So, Quarterback's going to catch the ball and he's going to either hand it off or he kicks back one step. He's kicking back one step on pre snap because the running back is doing his, his, um, uh, his, his, um, his course of action for the run play. So we don't want the running back to kind of bump into the quarterback. So he kicks back and he throws it or he catches it and he rides it. It makes it look like we're reading and we're really not. And that's all we do. We run quick screen with the gum. Or we go now with the outside right, uh, with the now to the uh, outside receiver, and then the outside guy away from the doubles is always running um, an ISO route, which we like to call just a gift right now. A gift. A gift is a hitch. If they're in your face, we run a fade. We do not audible. We will never audible at all. We have. We want to keep things in. I hate telling linemen to check and do a different block, stay what we have, we have an answer. If they're in man and this guy's pressing, we can go fade if we want to. It's built in. Now, the different schemes we got here, as you can see, it looks differently. I'm not going to get all in detail with this, just overviewing. This is at a 20 personnel split zone uh, with the bubble over here uh, is 10 personnel. We're running the zone with the bubble with the J. Um, we're blocking to the outside, and he's running his gift right here. Later on, you're going to see today, we're going to run slants and read this dude. Um, the now route on the bottom, and then three by one that way. Just a couple plays here. Just to, Again, outside guys, when we're doing it, we like to, oops, we like to have crop the picture, three areas, bubble to the outside and in the bottom, and then we're going to run a football in the middle. And he pre predetermines and he goes. Predetermines and he goes. Touchdown. Over here, we're going to run um, our cut play, fakes it, throws it. He's running a bubble. This is one back power, how we're going to get it one way and bend it back the other way. 
And instead, he catches and throws. Now, you're going to see some bad blocking, too. Or should I say no blocking? We're not perfect with that. No. Sometimes we don't win the point of attack at all. We're going to run quarterback power. The bottom guy should be running power, uh, bubble, but for some reason he didn't. All right. Anytime you can run with a quarterback and have that extra blocker, it's pretty cool. Again, again, you got to run in the pass, but it's lateral. It's a lateral throw. It's not down the field unless you're running the ISO. Hey, Rob, I think you had a question. Where? Uh, it's on the Two quick chat. questions. Wait, does the quarterback tell the running back? No, does not. I don't like that. No, just everybody goes. So if we're going to throw the football, we just kick back and then we throw it. He's not in the way. The running back takes his step, open crossover, he's there, and we're moving back, he's out of the throw. He's out of the throw. We do not communicate to the running back. I don't want the other team to pick something up. Plus, I want those linebackers to be, um, you know, trying to fill the box because we don't want them to make plays. Now, I told my D coordinator today, we were just talking about it again, me being an offensive coach and a head coach, I said, what's the worst thing that you do during practice? It's like, I don't do nothing bad. So really, really, you ever do a pursuit drill? Well, yeah, that's, those, no, I don't know too many kids that like freaking pursuit drill. So when they do pursuit drill and the ball snapped and they tell them to hit the ground and sprint laterally and run down the sidelines, that's all you're doing here. So if you're throwing the bubble, those guys have to pursue so even though if you get three or four yards, that's it, you are going to create them getting tired and wear them out. Good. Now, what I didn't tell you before was how do I know what the quarterback should do? We tell the quarterback, if you can get five yards on the perimeter, then throw it. Then get the football. I don't have him read shoulders of a guy. I don't have him count in a box. We say it's so common sense. Can you get five yards on the bubble? Yes. Throw it. I don't care what the run play is. I'll take it. Can you get five yards in a bubble? No, coach. Can you get five yards on the ISO? Yes. Throw the ISO. All right. Can you on the ISO? No. Run the ball. Okay. When in doubt, what do you do? Run the football. So we try and get five. Now, we just ran a play right here. And we went Peter, Peter. To me, means repeat. So we just did the same formation. We went right into football. And this guy right here was playing out here before all right so what do we do we go peter peter he runs into right here and now he's in the box there's two four six eight nine ten guys with two over here and we have the automatic call because we want peter peter and we throw the football back and that's what we did i'm not going to go over techniques and all that as a receiver but this is great with the stall but this is why we do it this is what urban meyer put in at notre dame the the bubble with the zone. That's it. That's all. That's like your perfect play that you want. Last one for here. We're in empty. We're going to run a quarterback inside zone with a bubble. Look at this. They're all in the box. Can you get five yards? He dropped it. There you go. You're damn right. You can get five. Take it. <clears throat> Take it. I cannot create. 25, 30 yard plays. We get them, but that's that. All right. So that's one. All right. Now, we also do pre snap with quick pass game. The difference between the screen and the pass game, the screen's behind the line of scrimmage, and the pass game is vertical. It's your quick pass game. We throw the quick pass game with a run blocking scheme. That's what we do. We just don't say, hey, everybody step in tight and throw the football. No. We have blocking for run, and we throw the quick game on the perimeter. And that's what we do. So we want to run a couple basic stuff. We want to run it out in a fade, and the backside is going to run his ISO. Hitch, slant, fade, and we're going to run the ball. Same thing. Can I get five here if I can? One step, throw it. All right? You have the fade. You have the out. Most times, we just keep throwing the out right here. But if they're blitzing and coming off the edge, zero coverage, 
we can draw the fade here, or this converts to a fade right here. Now, to show you the different schemes we have, we're going to run off, which means out, fade. I make it simple. So the kids know that the inside receiver is running the first letter for these schemes. And then we make them remember it. O, F, out, fade. So we go off, off. <clears throat> so we go out, fade. The backside guy is running his, his ISO route. Over here is hikers. Real simple. I just go double hikers, both sides. Hitch, hitch, and the other side runs the ISO, uh, the ISO route. That's it. I don't like running sloppy because in pre-snap, you don't know if this is open until there's a reaction with this guy. So we do that with an RPO where we read the backside inside linebacker. So I don't like sloppy um, with this. And then the fun thing is, is a gadgety thing that we do in zero coverage and all that stuff. So let me just show you a couple clips. Just a couple. Let me just. These are just pass plays. All right, now here we go. We're going to mix the out and the fade. As you can see on the bottom, they're running it out and fade. It's not open. It's cloudy. So he knows it. And over here, nah, I can't get five yards. Run power. Just run it. Everybody's running routes. If you watch the receivers, they are all thinking they're getting a football. I got a lot of prima donnas at receiver. They're, um, you know, a lot of Wawa guys are open 24-7. So let them think they're getting a football. I don't like I don't like to just block. I don't like this. this is my pet peeve as a as a coach, um, an offense. When teams do this, and they put a guy like right here, and then you see teams run in here to get the hips around and block, and they can't get it. And the fucking line coach is saying it would have been a touchdown if we only had a good cutoff block by the wide receiver. I don't try and fight this. I want to run outs. I want to run bubbles. I want to put him in conflict. And we're going to make it work. We're not going to try and force feed a, a run blocking scheme for, for guys that are trying to bait you to throw the football. So we're going to throw the freaking football. That's what we do. Now, here's our back shoulder fade to the, to the ISO. We're running power. All right. We work on that all the time. Our back shoulder fade is something that we warm up with. All right. Now, here's fourth down. It went fourth and four. We get on the ball. We go fire, fire. We get right on the football in this formation because it's a run pass thing. I yell out, I yell out, Texas trap, yes. The ball is going to the right. We're split flow, and he's going to run an out fade, and then he runs an ISO. So it's fourth down. The other team doesn't even know if we're going kick or not. We get on the football. We have an answer for both, both sides in the middle of the field. So here we go. This is fourth and four. Just gets right up there, throws the football. Quarterback, never played quarterback before this kid. He was a baseball guy. He was taught this system right away and did real well, 1,000 yards. Now, we Peter Petered it. This is the second play off it. So we just completed it on a fourth down play. We, they're, they're screaming that they didn't stop us. We get on the football. We're in the same formation, same play. He's doing this. He's kicking out. This guy's running an ISO on the bottom. He's an out and a fade. And here. Now. What they did, they widened out and covered the kid on the outside. He didn't like the look on both sides, so he runs the football. There we go. And we got ourselves eight yards. That's it. Same scheme. You can have three different things going on, and the other team doesn't know what's going on. Now, here's just, we're going to run it out and fade, and we're just going to get four yards. Just get four yards. That's it. With the run play, you don't know if it's going to be any, but we want to get four yards. This scheme where we go run and pass with our pre-snap, we run this first down and second down probably most of the time because we never, ever take a loss. We're either going to get an incompletion, which I get real mad at if we do, or we're moving forward. We don't take losses because if we run the football, it's because the box says so. If we throw the football, it says he's open. So we're very, very productive with that. All right, now we're running power with the off. He just incompletes it to the top, but there's nothing wrong with this ball right here. One step, throws it. I'll take that. I'll take that. 
even though it's an incomplete, it's still a productive play. Don't want to show this because he fucked up. Um, here we are. We're taking a chance again. Um, we're running power to the top. And now we're running the ISO route. These guys at the bottom are running out fade. Oops. Sometimes the best clips are one yet when we don't complete it. But the thing is, we have a lot of things going on, and we're not just saying throw the ball here and everybody cup the block and do that. So we're looking for the ball. All right. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Good. I don't want to show you too much with this. This. No, hiker, hiker. Just a couple here, and we'll get right to the other thing. Coach, are you freezing on this, or are you guys are you like tempo in this? Yeah, you... we tap, we tempo it, and we freeze it. Okay, thank you, Coach. When we freeze it, we my coaches when they first come in, they go, we need to change the snap count. We got to go. listen. My theory is those guys on defense are either jumping with the cadence or they're jumping on the snap. They I mean, going on two. I hate it. We used to have these things where we used to go, hey, white, white. White means red, white, blue. We're going on two. And we were so nervous when we went on two. We, us coaches, weren't confident. We're fucking going on one or we're going on candy. Candy is hard. On a hard count, it's your paint man. Red, tan, dance, hard, 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 hard. Easy, easy. I call the play, do it, and we go. And you're going to see that in the clips that we have that we do it. And I'll tell you right now. I would, I mean, this year, 90% of the time we did it, we got a big play because we're able to echo out what we want the guys to do and the guys do it. It's really, really simple. But we want to go freeze, freeze at times, at times. The kids like it when we do that. Plus, plus, it, plus it gives them a little bit of a breather. Um, that was a touchdown, but a bad thing right there. Okay, here's hikers. Catch throw, that's it. That's it. Now, when we run hikers, some years we clear with the inside guy, we run it out here. But here it is the ISO. Look, we're running power up top. There we go. That's it. That's all. That's all. Coach, are you guys ever in 10 or like true 11? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, coach, not with throwing the ball vertical. All right, because if you're going 11, which we're in spread a lot, which you're going to see in a second, when we're throwing a ball down the field, um, we usually run zone. And this end is unblocked, right? So we're throwing a screen or a ISO like this with this concept. You can't. You can't throw, like, you can't bet on these outs being open if this guy's on block. Does that make a little sense? Yeah, I got you, Coach. You never lock the end? I do. I do. So if I lock the end and run, like, zone lock and he blitzes, you can't block him, right? Yeah. So you're going to see in our next segment, we're going to RPO this. Okay. That, that we, we get to it, Coach. We get to it. Gotcha. When we want to run our quick game, we block, we, we, we block the, um, excuse me, we can leave the end alone, but the quarterback needs to know that you got to catch and throw it right away. You cannot just play with the football and sit back because he's going to get smacked. Right. All right. You're going to get smacked. So we have to make sure that end is slow played a little bit, a little bit. I like running our quick game at a 20 personnel because now the fullback is there and, and, and that's that. Now, here's one for you. We're running shovel pass. We're in pink. So pink to us now is the outside guys are going to run ISO routes, hitch, slant, fade. We're going to run a shovel. So we're running. When I run the shovel, again, I don't um, have time to do all these different schemes. So what I, the way I'm doing it, I teach it when I call um, spade, spade, which is a shovel, the running back swings to widen out the guy. So he's going to swing out here. This is the guy getting a football. So what we do, and there's the fullback, because everybody thinks we're going to there. He's going to block back. We're going to pull in the hole. He's going to get the football like this and right in the hole. The quarterback, to set up the Mike linebacker, he takes a step here like he's running sprint and shovels it. So he takes one step and shovels it. 
You get the Mike linebacker just to even blink, and then we got this. That's what we got. Now, while we're doing this, this guy right here is running a hitch. So we're blocking this scheme here, and we throw the hitch. That's how. That's what we do. So their box ain't open. He likes this 6'4 guy who's starting at Morgan State right now at tight end, getting the football. Kick back. One step. There we go. Now that's it. Now, everybody always says, well, how do you get everybody moving at the, you know, doing all these different things and the quarterback's still throwing the football? Because everybody thinks the ball's going to them. The, the box thinks it's going to them. Um, he's just distracting this guy right here so we get a little whiff. Receivers want the football. And I teach the quarterback, again, can you get five yards? Yes, get him the football. I think it's easier to throw the football to the outside than to get double teams and, and all that stuff. To, to get five yards in a run game. That's my philosophy. So here we go. But he did fumble at the one yard line. Matt, this is Manasquan. Now, if you want a clinic on fumbling a fucking football at the one yard line, I got a three hour clip for you because we do that. All right. None of these schemes protect that. All right. So here we are again. I'm just going to show a couple more and get right into it. This quarterback is very, very stiff but he still was adequate enough to do this type of stuff. Um, bup, 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 bup. All right. You, just five yard run. That's it. Nothing special. Nothing special. Anytime you can get a five yard run, that's a good play for us. All right, cool. Let's get into it. Oops. All right. All right. So any questions about quick game before we get to the, the good stuff. Any questions about the quick game? Quick to me means the quarterback takes one step back and throws the football to whatever scheme we call. Okay. Now, we are having our Coach, black. <clears throat> what? Coach, real quick, on your off route, is it a speed out or is it, yes. is it a 90 cut? Speed, speed, cut. speed okay. out. Thank you. It, it's open. Get it to him. Get it to him. I, Coach, I do – my. I, mean, I said this before. I'm not going to detail so many different things because I'm the type of guy that goes into a gym class and I watch a kid, they're all like to say they could touch the rim and dunk a volleyball. I can't touch a dunk of uh, a football uh, a basketball. And they're athletes. And you see them in the gym class and like, I want them on the football field. You bring them on the football field and they're great athletes and we fuck them up. We get them all confused with, you know, don't fall step. Your first, this is, yeah. And you throw all these things in his head. And they're going slow, and all of a sudden they're not having fun. I make them be who they are in gym class. So I want to um, tell them the schemes. I want to kind of coach them up on how to get it, and kind of you know tweak something here or there, but always give them a lot of positive stuff. Like that was a nice route, but I could have did something like this. And and don't overcoach it because too much material slows them down. Nobody wants to do something wrong. Kids are not going to go 100 miles an hour and make a mistake. They are going to, they're going to be very, very, um, you know, they're going to be very careful of their stuff they do. So don't overload them with stuff. So when you say quick out, so if we're going against a cover three, we tell this guy, bang here. We tell him if it's a five yard out at around three and a half yards, um, open your hips and roll to it and get there. I don't like to just plant because if it's cover three, if you do this uh, nice plant off your out uh, inside foot and you get in here, I think you're wasting time. This guy here is looking at the ball. Just get in a fucking area. Get here. Get where his hitch would be. And that's all we do, coach. It's street lot. It's street lot how we teach it, but it's still it's still um, detailed in its own sense. I don't overcoach. I don't. I don't. I had one quarterback coach in the area. I did it all. I was an all uh, head coach for a game, and I invited uh, so and so to coach um, our kids up. And he goes up to me and he goes, uh, "Hey, your junior quarterback, uh, his arm angle's not at zero angle. He's doing all these this shit." I'm like, "Excuse me." The guy's like Tim Tebow. The guy benches three fifteen. Um, he's already had an offer from Miami. He can run the ball. He can throw it. I was like, dude, with that athlete, you just tell him to do what he's doing. 
You don't overcoach a kid like that. You just don't. We don't. So here we are now with our black. Now we're going to go black. Black means backside, inside linebacker. All right. This is where we get all this stuff. Um, and, and, and this is the old fashioned fake the fullback, Matt, you know, in our Pop Warner, and then aimlessly throw the ball to the tight end. I don't know if you guys ran that when you were, uh, you know, a lot younger, like when me and Matt, Matt did in our Pop Warner days, but you would fake to the fullback, and we used to sell it to the quarterback, put your head down and fake it, and turn and throw the football. How the fuck do you know if he's open? Because he said he was open last play. We know he's blitzing. And you know what happens in a game? It's not open the next play. It's not. And you throw an interception and you got Coach Summerini screaming, don't throw that fucking ball ever, ever again. So with that being done and said, we're going to take that play and we're going to throw it when it's only open. And that's what we're going to do because we're going to read it from the shotgun. I was always open and I caught the ball. Yeah. You couldn't catch a cold butt naked in Alaska, Matt. <laughs> All right. Here's the rules of what we do. We have three-step concepts. Now, other people teach it differently. In the pop rules, people run this. People run outs. People run um, screens this way with it. I don't like running any screens off pops because if we fake here and throw it and this guy's engaged in a block, I have a feeling those line judges are going to cause for um, blocking downfield when a ball is there. So I want my receivers to all go for a pass route when we are in our pop. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five guys can get the football. That's what we're going to do for most times when we run our pops. Good. So one buzzword tells everybody what to do. We're not worried. So when people come talk to me and they go, how do you get everybody to do this stuff? Well, we call it this. And what else do you call it? That's it. It's built in. It's a storyline. So our run games are run game. We're going to create a window, something where you can see in the window. We are, that's what you're going to see. The party going to say, whatever schemes you have that you do, we're going to create a window and we're going to read the first guy um, away from the run play. So if we're going to run a taco, no, which is an inside zone to the left. And so we're going to go to the left. So we're going to RPO the backside inside linebacker, and we're going to crop the picture that way. That's what we're going to look at, look at and do. Now, let me show you the other routes in the rules. Okay. So if we are getting a pop, it's always the tight end, unless we tag it. So we call it Pepsi for soda pop because we're no huddle. So we get in the ball and we call it taco no. Now, our taco in Texas are inside zone, but we use a storyline where it helps to remember. They, they, they kind of comprehend that tacos in Texas, it's like a Texas food. So they know that it's inside zone, except on Taco Bell, when I go to Taco Bell, I eat out. So the backside guys are blocking out. So it's a man concept to the backside. So we're going inside zone here, and we're manning and blocking out here to create a window for the Mike linebacker. And that's what we do. And that's our number one blocking scheme with that. And one back power. And pin and pull. We'll go over that too. But with that. Now, our pop. So if we say pop, the tight end's getting a football. So we go taco, no Pepsi. You could say why pop, whatever you want to call it, whatever. So this is our role for our pop. So he's going to push higher than the inside linebacker. So once he gets on the hip of the linebacker, his next job is to get away from the free safety. It's that simple. Find grass. If the free safety's here, you're running a seam. If the free safety is like a cover two, you bang hard away from them. That's it. It is so, so sandlot football. That's what it is. We don't overcoach it. We don't want the kids to do different angles. Uh, we don't want to get on them. You need a, this type of an angle because it changes depending on where the ball's at, how deep the linebacker is, where the free safety is. Get in the area, and that's it. And that's all we teach you. So the pop is higher than the mic and away from the free safety. Done. Get out of here. Our pre-snap throws, when we run pop 
And we tell guys, when you pop the question to the girl, you get on your knee. All right? And that's what we do. So that's called a gift. So when we get on our knee and give, uh, when we pop the question to our girl, we're giving them a gift. And that's a five-yard hitch. So they know gift means hitch. And that's how they remember it. So if you're all by yourself, um, as a receiver, tight end zone cat as a receiver. He's by himself. He runs a gift. So that's his real quick. So if they're playing here, we don't know what they're doing. Let's take one step back and throw the football when we run our three step play. Okay. So that's the gift. If you're an inside receiver and you're not getting the football, you're running a bubble. So we want to create this type of illusion. We're going outside. We don't throw the bubble too much, but what it does, it frees up other routes. Now, Where's our home run hit? If you're an outside receiver with a receiver next to you and you're not getting a pop, you run a fade. So we got a three-step thing. We have a hitch, we have a bubble, and a fade built in. Again, rule. Where can you get five yards? No, no, no. I'm going to make my read. And my read is going to be right. Whatever he does, I'm going to go opposite. Now, I don't teach him to... Read hips, uh, is a shoulder turn, the belt buckle. Some guys get so detailed. I'm like, what the fuck? It's real simple. Is the guy in the window? If he is, hand the ball up. If the window's open, throw it. That's it. That's it. That's all we teach them. All right? And now we teach the quarterback, though, that we want to think quick. So what I do with my quarterbacks um, – if we're throwing the ball to the right, I want the ball right near my throwing shoulder side. I don't want to ride it this way and then turn back and throw it because I want to flash the ball. If it's open, bring it up and throw it. Bring it up and throw it. It's like a door. That's it. If I'm going to the left, I turn my feet around so I'm ready to throw it. Put the ball on my throwing arm side so it's right here instead of the front, back, and throw it's that quick and you'll see the quarterback how quick it is and i got clipped where they fuck up too all right so that's how simple our pop play is so run plays built in okay does he like his three step stuff no 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 now i'm gonna read this guy and that's what he does does he like this no no okay here i go read this hand the ball off or we pop it now watch all right now I have different type of uh, people running the pop, okay? It's, okay? I mean, is this big enough where you can see it? Please say yes, because I wouldn't know how to change it if you said no. Um, here's the rule. If the tight end doesn't get the football, he's blocking. So if we go X Pepsi, that means the tight end's involved in a block. So it's built in. We don't have to add another verbiage to it. It's built in, and it's flexible and multiple what we do. So right now, to the left, we're going to run taco, yes. So we're going to open up man to the backside. We're going to read this dude. Here's the rule. If you are not the inside receiver, okay, all right, and you're an outside receiver, the X is always an outside guy. It's a slant. So pop means a slant. So to the quarterback, this area is going to be looked at, all right? And I always say there's a couple different ways we can drive to Wawa. You can take Two blocks go right, or you can take one block and go left and go right. So we always say, here's the area. So you're going to go a different route. You're going to run a slant if you're outside. And if you're the inside guy, you're going to run that, that, that technique that we said before. So we're going to run a slant to the backside, and then we're going to run bubble fade. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Hey, on your Y pop, if the Y is reading the free, and the quarterback's reading the mic. How many times they screw up? And they're never, never. So that how Matt. do you get them on the same page if they're reading two different guys? Because it's practice. So it's what? Just, here it is, Matt. So if we read the mic, and if he reads this right, if he reads it right, he makes his break here. If the free is here, we're banging here on a hard slam. It's he's open. There's there's going to be some type of cushion. If the free's in the middle of the field, we're here. So we once we we read the mic going the wrong way we plant and we throw it it's too quick to have. it's too quick too quick now we have different rpos matt that we can go laterally too and we're going to do that another another one so everything is in vertical we also run 
flat. So we'll run to the outside instead of if the safety's up tight. Because we get safety sometimes going, fuck you, we're going to play here. Okay, we're going here, this way. And we'll throw it outside. We'll play around with it. So, but good question. All right. And again, why pop to the tray? It's just the J is now on the other side. And now, if we're going to run J pop to the right to this right here, the J pushes vertical. Once it gets higher than the mic, hard slant, vertical, runs bubble. Now the play next, oh, this right here, okay, we're going to have the inside receiver run it. His role is a slant. He runs the bubble because he's not getting it, and he runs the fade. So we give a little bit of an illusion of our bubble screen that we ran in our pin concept, and we really get some big money this way. And we have it. Let me get into it right here. This, I'll tell you right now, this thing right here is probably something we could talk about for a lot. I'm not even talking about this concept. Again, this is backside read stuff, but this is different combo routes. It's our stick concept. I'm going to talk about this another time, just like this one right here. Not that one. This one right here, our fungo play, our fullback in the flat. Um, Going opposite the run play, it's a really neat thing. We go split flow. He'll go from the other side to the flat, and we'll throw it to him, or we'll hand the ball off. Great, great uh, way to, to uh, set up your, your split zone. All right, let me get to it. Oops. All right. Now, these clips here are good stuff. I broke it down to run passes, too. So I think every two is a run or whatever. But All right, and I'll talk it through. All right. Now, quarterback gets up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Fucking huddle. Why is it doing this? All right, here we go. All right, we're reading that linebacker. You're going to see the tight end pushing on the um, – He's getting higher than him and finding a hole. He's running bubble. He's running fade. And he's running his gift. All right. The quarterback, the, the linebacker drops back. Drops, hands the ball off. We're running one back power. There we go. The thing I like about this is that you don't get the, the, the DBs fitting. You don't get the DBs getting for kill shots. They are. Pass pro and back, and we're running the football. You don't have those safeties kind of going after because the receivers are running routes, and we're running the football aggressively or attempting to. Who are you playing there, Rob? Jackson Liberty. They're running a 3-3 stack without blitzing any backer? Well, we Matt, we replace them all the time. People don't blitz us. If anything, they move back an extra yard back. Teams don't blitz us a lot, Matt, because we screen. And then we run our RPOs a lot. Yeah, but you, they're not even playing games. We beat them at. <laughs> Good. Touchdown. <laughs> I'm not complaining. We traded the tight end. Um, hold on here. We traded the tight end. So we're going to read that linebacker right here. Okay, we're going to read him. He throws the ball a little late. All right, a little late. But the free safety wasn't there. We made the play. We're getting the kids in his spots. We're running a 3-3 three, three stack here, Matt. All right. We're, get, we're doing it here now. We're going to RPO this guy right here. He knows the free safety is in the middle of the field. He's getting higher than him and finding the area. Watch how quick this quarterback releases it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, but that quarterback was a stud. Yeah, that's the kid that we have to work his arm angle, the fucking guy said. Yeah. You got another question, Rob. Oh, I'm sorry. What's up? It's, it's on the – I can't say it. I'm sorry. Coach, it's on, the, on, your pop, on your pop play, you have your your uh, your backside receiver, whoever's running the – or the receiver that is in the technically uh, to the side of the tight end. Yeah. The safety's coming down and Robin 
Robin the Pop. Will you put him on a tag him on a glance? Coach, everybody does something like that. I don't. You're right. Some people run that um, that hitch, and then they kind of get in tight like that. Um, in other words, if he's covered, then somebody gets in the area, does that. I don't do that. I don't. I keep it real simple. Okay. Um, that's probably a good idea to do. To have if you if you have your pants down, where are you going with the football next? Right? Is that what you're saying? I was just saying, like another way to ta tag it to ba like bastardize it. So if they want to rob, they want to rob your take yeah. away your, your pop. You got something where you can step on the corner's toes and cross, you know, kind of cross face, you know, replace yeah. the safety. Yeah. Replace the safety kind of. Yeah. 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 So. Yes, coach. Good point. I mean, there's so many things that you can do. I kind of simplify things in a way. I have other answers for it. Um, but uh, I mean, that's something you would do, though. You wouldn't. I mean, that's something that you would work with your guys. And then, yeah. like, you know, it, it'd be a you know game time thing. You'd be like, hey, look, all right, here we go. Think, you know, think uh, if that's your Z receiver out there by himself. Think, no, you know, some you people do this. Z, Z if, glance. I run a fade. So if he runs, um, let's just say he runs his pop right here. Some okay. people do this. They'll run a hitch and then they'll gradually get in here like a Peyton Manning slant. So okay. if this guy runs with them. He comes right over here and catches it. Yeah. You know, again, having an answer with it. I take pride that that almost like that if you're making that read that we're going to sling it in there and get there. But you're right. There are a lot of people that kind of put an advancement of things on it. My guys here, um, I keep it simple. A lot of them play both ways. Um, I want them going fast. I'm always telling them, don't worry. That was nothing. I'm always reassuring them of the stuff that they're doing is right. Keep doing what you're doing. I don't want to overcoach and, and have a billion different things. Now I do have other schemes that I do to attack those things, but um, I don't read uh, third level. Okay. Other people tell me I don't, I rather just play action and then do it like a post dig. I, I don't do you. that stuff, but a lot of people love to say they're third level. I don't do that. I just read second level um, stuff. And again, coach, we're no huddle. Like, I just don't like pick it out of the hat and go, let's run this. Like, we get on the ball and we'll we'll do our candy down and say, no, 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 easy, easy. I'm processing. Okay, let's run our backside read. We get into our thing and we do it. All right, let's forget this guy. This was a bad read, the quarterback. All right, here it is. Now, I think somebody asked, what happens if the free safety, like, how do you, Shake, like if, if he makes the read and he doesn't shake the free safety, you're going to watch him shake it. The only thing he does wrong, the tight end, he didn't shake it early enough. He kind of took two steps after him and, and had, had less of a cushion with the safety. But watch how we set this up. Everybody from the outside is, is – everybody's covering each other from the outside, and the tight end shakes it and does that. I think, Matt, you might have said that. So – this guy's a tight end, starting tight end for Holy Cross. So he's getting here, and then we got it. Look at it. He's setting up his next move, throws it, bang. And that's what we got. Let me put it fast forward. But that's where it really starts clicking. And linebackers hate that we, you're picking on. See the linebacker blitz? I don't know what coordinator is going to want to call the same call after you just picked picked on his linebacker in a blitz. I don't know. All right. Now we're running the football because this linebacker, um, move this thing right here. All right. So this linebacker drops. All right. The number two receiver runs the bubble. There we go. That's it. Just getting the guys in space. Now, this quarterback was a transfer, uh, triple option guy. Here is the, the gift route. So he's either running a hitch, and then he converts it to a fade. He's riding the pin and pull and saying, nah, I'm going to fucking throw it to the guy who should be a one step back and throw it. So, yes, we made a touchdown out of it. Yes, I corrected it the next day. On the game day, you know what I told him? Nice fucking throw. That's what I told him. All right? He threw it late because he was reading it and he shouldn't have read it, but we got the athletes in space. 
we're really supposed to read this guy. So he's like reading it, moving back, back shoulder, and that's that. We got the athletes moving though. I just coached up one position. I coached the quarterback up. I didn't coach up anybody else. Quarterback on that one. All right, here we go again, reading the backside guy. We're going Pepsi, Pepsi, which means why, why, why pop? That's our no huddle shit. Bang. There we go. That's it. That's all we want. The throw is not a 15-yard throw. You know, you always hear people go, I can't get my quarterback to do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Throw it to the person who's wide open that's eight yards away. That's it. Quick. Pop. Pop. Throw it. All right, now we're going to run this out of hammer, which is counter tray. Now, this is our this is practice and all that. But just to show you how it would look in a game, we're going to pull the guard and the fullback. We're going to read that dude. We're going to RPO with this. <clears throat> all that's going on, as you can see, he's reading it. Again, we're not, we don't have resistant, resistant with the defense, but that's what it looks like. Watch the receivers to the outside because they're in ISO routes. They're running fades. We don't block. Why would I want the fucking dude blocking here and he can't just block, run the route, take the corners out? When you do that, it expands to safety. But I love stealing in the middle of the field. But you can't take the middle of the fucking field when the defensive coach has, is always in the middle of the field. Always. I hate that. Like a fucking attitude all the time. Oh, God. But here we go. All right. Now we're reading this area here. The linebacker bumped to the middle. So there's really nobody here. So he knows he's throwing the football for the most part. There you go. There you go. He's open. Do it. Don't force it. If he's there, he's there. Bang throw. There you go. Coach, I'm surprised with the size of that guy that nobody's putting any fucking hands on him to slow him down. <laughs> I know. And that guy, that guy was the biggest, that guy was the biggest pain in the ass, dude. He was. <laughs> he was. Now here's a pre-snap throw, coach. So we're RPO in this side right here. So this kid's running a slant. This kid's bubbling. The tight end blocks because he ain't getting a ball. And this guy's gonna run the gift, but he converted it to a fade. And we throw the fade. So watch the bottom part first. Do we run the slant? He runs the slant there. He should be a little, he should run it a little flatter, the slant. He should. But that's the action. But he's not giving it love. We're pinning pulling up top. All right. And th that's another clinic itself. Hey, Rob. Yeah. On, on your gift route, um, does the receiver make the um, decision? Yeah. Based on the depth of the corner on which Matt, route he's You're right, Matt. Here's what we do. Because no receiver, no quarterback want to look look stupid if they threw it and he wasn't paying attention or whatever. They give they give a hand. It's always a gift unless we change it. So it's a gift. So we don't just say, hey, I'm running the gift. It's expected. I don't want too many hand signals. If they're gonna go fade, they touch their helmet. They touch their helmet. The helmet means I'm going up top. That's, okay. a, that's that simple. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's, a, that's a good one. I like the fact that these linemen are pulling. Now they weren't downfield, but he took he he should have if he's throwing this guy kick back and throw it. He kind of lets it ride a little later than you want. We scored a touchdown, right? I mean, if we handed the ball off too, but he but but he, but he wasn't looking at his read here, so he was throwing here the whole time and that's that again this kid was never a quarterback in this offense but well you could tell by the corner's head he was staring at his sister in the shower <laughs> yes all right here's our candy coach we're going hard count we're in pistol and i called our rpo we're gonna uh we're gonna go pepsi with our tight end because i saw the free safety the free safety is playing three yards outside the tight end. And I know that he would get into that hole right there and it was open. I just knew it. So we went candy, candy. So everybody's 
Heels are back. Look at this guy's stance right here. I don't give a fuck if the corner knows that he doesn't look like he's bursting because we ain't trying to get him to jump. We're trying to get those freaking linemen to jump. So here we go. Oh, my bad. Candy, candy. Now they turn to me. I call the play. That's me, the real good looking guy right there. All right. So now we're going to run Taco. Right. So, and, sideline warning, white. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. And, and it's great. You do it one time and the kids buy into it. You know, we're looking at it. Run the play. He goes to rifle. Run it and watch the tight end make his move. Go. There you go. That's what you wanted. That's it. That's it. Now, I didn't say throw the ball to the tight end. He makes his reads on what he does. Now, back shoulder. Back shoulder. We're going to go. Um, we're going to read this guy right here. We're running wide pop. But he is going to pre-snap it and throw it to the guy running the ISO who's running a back shoulder. And this is, Coach, we practice this all the time. Back shoulders all the time when we do our warm-ups. So this is something that's cool when these guys do it in the game. Back shoulder, back shoulder, back shoulder, that's it. That's all we do. And again, all that was was bench uh, Pepsi. Here's uh, JV kids, but it's still a read. We're going to run X Pepsi, which means this guy's running the slant. He's bubbling. We're going to run the ball to the right. Um, what run we like? Taco. All right. See how we're blocking out with that tackle? You'll see it, uh, the end zone shot. We got an end zone shot with this, but we're reading that dude. And we don't overcoach it. Basically, if he can't tackle that running back, then, then there. This is a better, better view right here. Oops, my bad. All right, that's what we're reading. Um, he wasn't a threat to make the tackle, and that's that. I don't overcoach it. There you go. That's it. Get him the football. That's what it looks like. That's, that's your perfect place that you want. I got, listen, I got mess ups here too. But that's what you want the pop to look like. I couldn't get that uh, different. All right, you're going to see him quick. This is our practice. This kid right here, it's funny. This dude right here, this Penn State, fastest fucking kid I ever saw off the edge. And um, he tries to get us on our quick stuff. Like you should see him when we do inner squad games. And, and he has an attitude, too. Sometimes it's good. But here we go. We're going to RPO this dude. And that's his brother. He complains if he don't get the ball. So Wawa is open right now, 24-7. He's reading this dude. Throw it. That's it. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Get the ball quick. It's a safe play to get in there. Bang. That same game that he had that big, big catch. Again, it's a 3-3 stack. Just the way this quarterback gets rid of the football, how quick he is, is, is great. Just because he goes, what happens is the time you see it open, it's got to be thrown. You can't see it open, say, all right, let me regroup and now put it in a loaded position and throw the football. You got to be ready to throw it now. And that's it. That's awesome. Move that fucking ball. All right, now. All right, we're running Fungo. Kids love that, F-U. So we got, I'm just going to show you, and this is another clinic we're going to do with this with the fullback. But um, I have pin and pull. I don't know which guy's pulling. It depends on the thing. All right, we have the running back here. He's going this way. We have the fullback here. And on the snap, he's doing this. He's behind the line of scrimmage. FU stands for fullback under. I have the tight end, if he's in the game, to release and block the outside guy, whoever it is right here. So we got flow going to the right, and we're going to read this dude right here. And if he runs with them, we throw it. He stays put. We hand the ball off. So it's a, it's a, black, it's a black call. 
So quarterback knows that he's reading backside linebacker and we're running fungo. So we would go, um, we would run Hawaii, no, fungo. Okay. So it's going to the left, backside guys, him, fungos to the right. That's the concept that's running around. And that's what we're doing. So it's just like a bluff scheme, except you're not keep quarterback. Quarterback's not running it. You're just throwing it, right? Yeah. And I'm going to show you something. Yeah. Okay. So we bastardized it because most people like to read the end and make it look like you're going to trap him like split zone. I can't teach my quarterback that. So I actually talked to those guys, Noel, those guys, and told them why I do it this way. What the way people run it, coach, is they do split zone. So they'll do this. They'll have him go here, here, and they'll leave that end alone. And he'll read them. If he crashes, they throw it. He goes upfield, we hand it off. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. I block this guy and read this guy. Because my eyes and my quarterback, that's how we read it. Black. I bastardize it. So we're running zone lock um, or we're running pin and pull. But our guys are reading that inside linebacker, backside, not the DN. It's too much. To me, I can't have them do all that stuff. We're good at reading that. And I have answers other than throwing a football, too, to do it. All right, let's see one more time. Yes, it's a bluff. But I'll tell you right now, if you throw it, it's a big play. We do it out of many different ways, not with a tight end, too. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Oops. Some of the cut-ups I got are going to be ones that we fucked up, which is good. All right, now we're running this out of uh, three receivers with a tight end. Tight end blocks. There you go. Biggest guy I ever coached is that right tackle. This guy right here is six foot seven, 360. <laughs> and when I tell you I, it was simple enough for him to run, trust me, he was not, he wasn't a uh, Yale. All right, good. All right, here we go. We're going to run Y pop. But we're handing the ball off now. All right? He made the read. We still got it. We got second level. There we go. That's it. Anytime you can get the running back into second level, it's a good play. Here he is real quick with the pop to the tight end. This was really threading the needle. Bang, boom. Really was. Here's a run play. Oh, pass. My bad. There you go. It's, it's that simple. The bottom line is, is that there is a window there. If that linebacker vacates it, we got to thread the needle and that's a play. And we want to be very consistent about throwing that when it's open and making the play or making the layup like the same basketball. That to us is a layup. Layup. There. There you go. We're stealing it. And as you can see me at the bottom, I'm screaming, Probably Peter or Flip or whatever. And it's tempo. I'm right here. The guy with the long hair. We get on there. Boom. I'm calling things. Right? I'm calling things. Getting there. Good. And we're running. I'm in control. Pin and pull. We're running J-pop here. We're reading this dude right here. Um, this is actually a pretty nice fly. Bang, throw it. There you go. There you go. I'm telling you, guys, there's nobody between the quarterback and the receiver when we're throwing it. It's a very comfortable, very comfortable play. 
we're doing it. Now we're gonna run power to the to the nose side, which is uh, to the left. We're gonna RPO this dude. The coaching point is the X receiver is too far out, but we still do the slant there. He's too far out. I wanted to skinny it up. Just showing you how we mix it up with different things. Uh, I'll forget about this one. Uh, okay. Taco white pop. Oh, okay, yeah, here we go. To the tight end. Bang throw. That's it. That's all it is. Guys, we attack the middle of the field and we do it with a purpose. And again, not five step drop. We do all that shit, but we attack the middle of the field, which is a quicker throw and more clearer throw if it's open, but we're running the football. We just don't say throw it in the middle. People think that we're play action passing. We're not. We're reading it. There he is. He's open. There you go. Just don't forget. Yeah. What? You guys don't see a lot of man to man, do you? We we do. You do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We actually do. And I'll show you what we do. It's actually pretty cool. Again, do if you have a running quarterback, stealing. Couple more. Couple more. I love the pot. When I told my coaches what I was talking about today, they rolled their eyes, going, oh, Jesus Christ. I love this shit. I do. I love having an answer for everything. I just do. All right, here's a great coaching point right there. You're going to see the window. You're going to see the window. Now, we don't tell linemen to just block your rules and just go. Because let's just say they have too many guys in a box. I hate when the line coach will be like, wait, who's got it? Just fucking do your rules. We will put the ball where it's supposed to be. If it's too many people in a box, we better fucking throw it. If there's nobody in the box, block who you think you should be blocking, and we should be running the football. So we're going to read this dude. We're running X Pepsi because it's three by one. Tight ends blocking, gum, fade, or whatever. Yeah, fade. He's running the RPO. And then you're going to watch it from the end zone and watch how open it is to a quarterback's view. Now watch this. This is what you want. Look at that. That's what you got. I mean, th I mean, sometimes you don't realize what a quarterback and a receiver is looking at, but that ho hole opened up right there. That, that right there, this hole oh, opened up. Look at that. There's nobody there. There's nobody there. We should be. Very successful with that. That's a pretty play. That is a pretty play. All right, we're going to run pin and pull again. And it's a run. Now, you're going to get receivers saying, Coach, I was freaking open. No, you weren't. Shut up. All right, they don't know. You know, they're. But I will tell you this, if you put this stuff in, you'll have receivers running harder a lot more consistently than trying to block. There you go. Coach, when we're done, remind me about, um, uh, man, man. All right, now we're gonna run the bubble. We're gonna go Z Pepsi. So here's where it looks great. You have him running the bubble. By rule, he runs the fade. He does his thing here. Now he runs the slant. All right. Now remember, when we did our pink call, we would have a bubble screen where he would be blocking for this guy, and they're going to fight through it. You're going to see a lot of times this guy fights through it, um, and we, we get a big play here. It looks pretty when you run into the number two. Throw it. That's it. You're just changing things up, changing things up, our menu. Couple more, then we get to the negatives. Get him to second level. That's it. If you can get a running back to second level, you did your job. And now, this quarterback rides it. I didn't care. They, he did this. It, it was open. There we go. How do you get mad at that? Would you overcoach it? No, I don't. 
Don't come back to me, coach. I did it. I didn't, I didn't ask. Good job. He made a play. He made a play. He knew where the guy was. We're running pin and pull. Made the play. That's fine. Back shoulder fade. He just tapped his helmet. Oh, I went, come on, tap your helmet. Oh, he didn't do it here. Whatever. Back shoulder. That's it. All right. And all we're doing right here is running white, white Pepsi. All right. So Pepsi. So we're going to be running bench no Pepsi. And he runs back. And he runs back. She runs back shoulder. Back shoulder face. And then you have defensive coaches from other teams going, they like to run their quick game on the side uh, when they're here. Well, we run the quick game all the time. In a lot of different schemes. So they got to prepare when they play us that the DBs are playing ball. They're going to make tackles after they cover people. So we're giving them um, a lot in their plate. I think so. Hey, Rob, what does your yes to no yes. signify on your play calling? Yes to the right, no to the left. Okay. So if we go yes, it's to the right, no's to the left. That's it. Hot, cold. You know, yes is the dominant. Don't ask me. They remember it. Now, here's the bad ones. I got five bad ones. The coach, the quarterback's mechanics, he has the ball winding up, and then he turns, he's ready to throw it. Here, it's open, and then he has to gather himself to throw it, and he fucked up. Now, watch him ride. The ball goes to his left side, should never go to his left side. So he's open now. So now he's got to regroup and throw it. And he fucked up a touchdown. So that was him. Bad technique. Now watch how open this tight end was on this play. He sees over top is wide open. He knows that's his destination. This dude's eyeballs are lit up. Right? And he missed it. It's still a good play. Do it again. All right. Now, this quarterback is supposed to read this dude, and you cannot make this play go longer than two seconds. He's make he he drops back, lineman or downfield. It's a fucking bad thing. Look at this. Not good. Just not good. And that's an inexperienced quarterback. That was game one for him. All right. Tight end just dropped it. You can't get mad at this. That's it. Still a good play. A couple more. All right. Now we're in empty. Our rules are real simple. This here is called Trey Wright. So when we go Trey, the tight end's blocking. The J is gumming. The Z is running a fade. Come on. The X, because it's called X Pepsi, is running a slant. The running back is out here. So he's taking the, the, um, the hitch. He always runs a hitch. The quarterback is running the play. So what he's doing, we're going to go Bench, yes, um, X Pepsi. He's going to read this dude. He's going to take one step. If he does not threaten the run game, he's going to re he's going to run the one back power. If he's coming and can make the play, he's going to turn and throw the throw the uh, slant. If he likes his pre snap throws here, 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 he can do it. Watch how wide open the guy was. Missed it. Missed it. Missed it. And the way he should have been taught, um, the way he taught, the way he should have reacted was expect something uh, quick to happen and then react the other way. He got like surprised. Now he, he I mean, he just on that play, he got surprised, wide open. You do know, as well as I do, in games, like if you had the middle of the field and you had and you just missed. That play may not be there again. 
It's not one of those things like, oh, we'll get it back. They they make adjustments. That's open. You know, my, my coaches are funny. They over-exaggerate. That was a fucking touchdown. It was not a touchdown. But, I mean, this guy's not like – everybody exaggerates. All coaches, though. We all do. Um, but a couple more. He dropped this. We always tell the receivers this. Uh, a new rule came out. When the ball hits you in the hands, you're allowed to catch it this year. We always say that all the time. And they know what I'm going to say. I say that joking around. Yep, joking around. <laughs> so uh, that is that. Good. Now, about you guys, what you said, uh, would you say man to man? Yep. All right. Man to man, we, we do a thing called Kobe. When, when I think of Kobe Bryant, I think of pick and roll. So we have to set a pick. If you're going to run something, he's here. And this guy does this, and he runs with them. It's open, correct? It's open. But if they're in man like this, and you can't shake him and he goes with you, even though the, the key says throw it and you throw it, this guy's in the way. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So what we do is we call it X Kobe. Now, when we say X Kobe, so let's just say they're in man. They're in man. This linebacker is running this way. So here is the hole. So I got to get my receiver here. With, with some type of separation for a split second at least. So if we say X Kobe, so we're going to go to our run game. He's going here. He's not getting the ball. He's blocking. He's running the gift. He's going to push, and he's going to run the fade. And he's going to break down, stutter step, right this. So he's going to go one, two, three, and he's going to run a slant like that. And then what he does, like in basketball, we roll to the basket, and it's a fade. That's what we do. So if we say Kobe, Kobe, the inside receiver runs and blocks him with his hip and then runs fade. So if they kind of switch guys, we got a guy going slant and a guy going fade. Does it make sense? Yeah. So one is slower that. off the ball because he's got yeah. to come off that guy. He's got to come off the Jay's ass. Underneath it. So the X – is pushing like it's a, a fade and comes underneath. So if this guy wants to fight it like this, and how he's still, we're, we're, we separated just a tad. Does that make sense? So now yeah. when the quarterback's eyes are to throw it, he doesn't know what the fight is going on here. He just knows when he's ready to throw it, somebody's kind of open. Does that make sense? Yeah. So That's the X is pushing vertical for at least three hard steps to sell the fade. At least three. Okay. Three steps and get underneath it. Gotcha. We, that's what we want to do. We work on that all the time. Um, you know, just to kind of get at, just the release underneath. Cause hey, Rob, in, what? On on that, couldn't the J um, outside release and push the the uh, um, sideline shoulder to get the um, backers' sh uh, shoulders turned and then put a foot in the ground and get that slant. Yeah, well, we we tell him Matt to run an inside fade, and when and then try and block him with his hip like this, and then release because we're we're trying to set it up for him underneath. Right, but if the J pushed the outside shoulder of, of that him? defender, yeah, and then put a foot in the ground and ran the slant because that guy, if he's that tight, he's going to turn and run. He's not well, going to open up inside. He's going to open up outside. Yeah, he can. But there's no rub with that. You're saying, can he just shake him like this? Yeah. Yeah, he can. Yeah. But um, that, to, that to me would be sloppy. In other words, double slant. Okay. But we, would do, we like to do this. Yeah, I like, I like the Kobe shit. Because I'm going to tell you what. In practice, we have these guys like doing this. Sometimes the fade comes open then with that. I got so a question that. for you, Coach. Yeah. So a lot of the teams we play, when they run that man, they funnel those two receivers into each other. Up okay. That. Like, like, 
you're saying they just they, they push, push them them together. into they each other they, yep they follow them right in the in this in together up that scene so he's outside outside conscious and then he's kind of like an inside guy he's either inside or he apexes and he comes over and they funnel that mm -hmm. right up right I into would, each other I, I would go man i mean uh motion like this and then do what matt said yeah right yeah because it makes them I think stay home motion, motion confuses them yeah they got to bump over they got to bump over and everybody wants doesn't want to get their uh you know their asses bumped into so I would probably do this to show the illusion we're going wide on some type of bubble screen and do that. Or do that with this to free that up. Yeah. You know, so funnel, I would go. They can't funnel then. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. If you're doing this and you're telling me he's funneling them, now he might kind of redirect with this guy while we're doing all this shit to get to this spot. So, um, yeah. That's what the, now, coach. the The old saying is, when you ask an RPO guy, "What do you do um, against uh, man to man?" Right away, they go speed option. Fuck, I don't run speed option. I don't do that shit. Um, but that's what they do. That's what they do. I will say this. Here's what we do against. Um, let me show you. Okay, uh, bum, bum. against man to man. Right, and this guy is probably man, Matt, probably with the running back. Right, w would you say that? Let's just say yeah. these guys, yeah, are man. Let's just say these guys are man, and we're doing something like this. So, we're gonna read this dude, and the quarterback's gonna run it. I call it paint. So, when I do paint, they call it PA. I don't even know how to spell it. Uh, P A uh, and T. I think that's it. Paint. Paint to a quarterback. When you paint, what are you doing? I'm drawing. Oh, draw. So painting outside and draw. So we're going to run a swing screen and we're going to paint. And then I'm going to call the play. So I don't have to say swing screen. The word paint tells the tailback, you're swinging. The word paint tells the receivers, you're blocking, you're blocking. The word paint tells the quarterback that he is going to read the linebacker to his side. And he's going to either throw the swing or he's going to replace that linebacker. So if we want to run, um, I don't know, one back power, which we call bench. All right, so these guys are like this. The guard pulls in the hole like this. We run one back power. So I, and then he runs, we have him block. So on the snap, take three quick steps, three quick steps. If this guy is in a box, we throw it. Does that make sense? We throw it because it's man. Because what's going to happen is this guy probably might be playing man. And I'll take my chance with a guy here and a guy playing 10 yards back. Does that make sense, guys, a little bit? Yeah? Yes? Yeah. Is he yeah. is he leaving is he leaving free snap to out leverage that guy or is he you going can, out? You, coach, you can do that. I only minor in this. I only minor in it. If I had to do this scheme with like what you said, people will put him at running back to the right and then put him in motion to the left. Yes, you can. I bastardize it because I don't major in it. I minor in it enough to do it. So I don't do that. My running backs are not very good at motion. We don't do it a lot. So I don't want to fuck up a play because we motion wrong. I don't practice it enough. But yes, the, the, uh, the end zone guys, they motion shift from the right and go in motion to the left. Yes, that fucks up the linebacker. But what this is only what I do. So I'll swing him like that. Now, if this guy runs with him, because if you go in motion quick, you're also going to get a quicker indicator motion. Uh, I mean, a quicker indicator with this guy, what he's doing, right? Yeah. So if he's running with him, bang and replace. That's all we know. Right. If you Google that quarterback draw, um, you'll see that um, on the internet. 
It looks perfect. The guard is pulling. There's nobody there because he's running with them, and he does it. But like Coach just said, they'll put the running back here and on the snap, I mean, down set the cadence and fuck it up. And fuck it up. Now, what we do, though, to marry it up, I do uh, at that. Okay. Let's say this. So let's just say he's the running back. He's swinging. He's blocking. He's blocking. He's blocking. We run a split zone where he blocks backside. We run power and we read this dude right here with a fullback. So we swing him. Um, let's just say it's power like this. He's down, down, down. He's here. Bang. Boom. There we go. We do it with many different things with that, but that's our paint, which means draw, um, draw action with that. Right. Is there anything else? Anything else on that stuff? So I just had a quick question for you. I know you said that the um, your your pop play you guys run it off of the uh, coming across the cylinder, so like a, an outside zone or a pin pull scheme. Did you find for you guys that you were more effective running all of your RPO or a lot of the RPOs that you showed us tonight off of the inside zone play? Did you get a lot more run by the linebacker, you know, coming across the cylinder or running the inside zone track? Well, I think it's better to run one back. here. If I want to get – let's say we're baiting this guy. Um, all right, picture him here. He's not there. So if we're doing this, if we did inside zone, you get something like this. And if this guy's not moving, is that what you're saying? He's not moving all right? Moving yeah, I'm saying right? like, did you do you feel like you got more movement from that backer coming across the cylinder or running the inside zone track? Oh, you mean like coming inside this way? Like, like he, it, like the linebacker playing over like running over the top did you get more movement laterally yeah depending uh, on right, what well, we want if we wanted to get more movement from him we run power okay so we would uh why did i do that um in other words let's just say our we want to run inside zone lock if we don't think that he's moving a lot and maybe the read's a little weird we're just going to pull the guard and that seems to kind of give a little bit more of a scrape. So we would do this. Um, I would pull him like this. And may, I would kind of get him more here to throw there. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, I, I, see what, I see what you're saying. I was just talking yeah. about your backfield action, whether you got more, you got more movement with that back or yeah, either with that movement or coming, bringing him across. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, oh. Coming yeah. across. Coming yeah. across. Yeah. You're after, yeah. Coach, if you're going horizontally fast, he has to move quick or you're going to – he's not going to be in a play. That's Just what I'm saying. That. Like, I think you're going to – I think that it moves him – I think across the, across the cylinder moves that guy a little bit for – displaces that guy a little bit further. Yeah, we, we we like the pin and pull. And again, we pull whoever is uncovered. So when you get this action, it kind of like steals. And we get this shit. Absolutely. Bang. We throw that. We, we do. Um, now, just to show you a little bit about what I'm going to talk about another time is we don't always run here, here, to here. We want to run a stab play, which is a stick. So if we're running this, all he does is this. Yeah. So we're going to read this dude. And this guy thinks that we're going deep all the time. If he goes here, here, we throw it here. That's it. And uh, that's been a good play for us um, because it's an answer to, you know, just not always doing deep balls. But don't forget, Coach, we're running wide pop. We're not always throwing it to the tight end. We might be running the ball. We may be throwing to the outside gift. We might throw the bubble. We might throw the fade to the other side. 
So those receivers are constantly running routes. And the defense doesn't understand when and why we're doing it. They don't. I don't think people realize what we're doing. I don't. I got you. I, I got I you. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of think that this is something that not everybody does. That, um, you know, that, that I think that it's confusing to people, defensive coaches. You know, oh, their answer man. is, fuck it, let's blitz. You know, they're playing cover two. We're beating them. Then they're like, oh, now we got to go man. Now you can motion and do the stuff that you guys were talking about. Putting it back on the other side, doing this. We do things, too. We'll start in pistol. Red 10, red 10, down. Set up. They don't know which one. So if they're telling, they're going, hey, every time the guy is here, they're always reading you, which we're not. Coach, we're, we're not. Because I'm going to tell you right now, we're doing, let's say he's not there. And I want to block here like this and have the quarterback run on back power. I could be doing this. So it's not always like wherever the back is, that's the guy we're, we're going to RPO. The back could be here and we could be reading this dude. Does that make sense? You have the quarterback, a, yeah. yeah, you have quarterback a tendency breaker. Get, mm-hmm. The quarterback can get the ball Look at the mic, and that's his read. He doesn't come. Now I run. That's what we. It doesn't have to be a flash to a running back. So we play around with that shit. We move him around. We'll put him here and dance him to here. Um, sometimes we just tell the running back and the running back coach, "Yeah, have fun with it. Who gives a shit?" Because we're in no huddle. I mean, they might be bored going, "I'm gonna fuck around. I'm gonna go to loose and start here." Come and come back. I don't give a shit. But when a ball snaps, you better be here. Got it, coach. You know what? To me, he has more of an investment in the play, and he's really doing some critical thinking, and I, I like that. I do. Uh, I like how you start out in pistol, and then you move them. You can sidecar them, because then they can't declare their front based on where the back is. So right. you can start them in a pistol and then move them you know, uh, pre-snap. And then if they don't move, they don't adjust. Then you got to, you know, you got a good look depending upon, yeah. you know, how they, how they, if it's a four down and where they're going to play their three, where they're going to play their one, all that stuff. Um, Most defensive coaches don't like movements. Yeah. Or, or you do something that they weren't prepared for. Right. There you go. You know, I, you go. I, I, that, that to me. And again, when you run this scheme or if you run the pink scheme uh, of the RPO, and you get so into numbers of what's my tendencies? Well, tendencies can kind of be taken the wrong way too. Because you, let's just say you're running stuff um, and you're always throwing the gift. It's not a tendency that Rob Davis is always calling a hitch on third and three inside the 30. It, because you're, you're throwing what's open. Because in these schemes, like when we're doing black, he's doing this. He's doing this, he's doing this, he's doing this, and he's doing this. That's one, two, three, four, five different things that we can do. It's not a tendency if we do that. It might be a reaction to the defense, what we're doing. So if you're doing um, scouting an RPO offense, you better do what the defense is doing and then make tendencies off that. So in other words, if when they're in this and you're in a 4-4, four, four, then the tendency is they probably do this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it drives me crazy because I like to be tendency. What What are teams thinking that we're doing? And I know no, a lot of guys ain't overdoing it. They're like, oh, they run, they throw the ball to the tight end or they do that. Like they don't understand what we're doing. But us coaches are like, oh, how can I make, like, it just, we're always trying to make sure that we are not, transparent to the defense well, we don't. Uh, but, I just oh, had a quick, we, that's awesome that's awesome i just had a doing question this. For you. yeah your stick your, how much stick do you guys run run a lot of stick or no i don't no okay coach i've had four division one tight ends four and the base play that most people run with a tight end is stick uh no for us it's pop okay for us it's pop I mean, it, it, and, and again, we minor in it. We don't major in it. We minor in it. If you don't major in something, you ain't going to be good at. It. So we're good at this. 
if you don't major in this, you ain't going to be good at it. You can't just dabble in it. You got to be all in and do it. And it's got to be an investment with your line coach. And he's going to get along with the receiver coach because they're not at odds and ends anymore. Because I don't need him to block if I'm running the ball here. Now, coach, we do run the ball outside. And if that's the case, we do block. But the backside ain't blocking. They're popping. They're doing all this shit, you know, this type of stuff. So, but you don't get a lot of receiver coaches and line coaches fighting each other because you don't hear them saying if they only fucking blocked, you know, <laughs> right? You hear it all the time. Um, I, I love it. I, I like the fact that you, you're, you know, and it's, it's at the high school level, you're giving these other guys the ability, well, oh, you got to block that guy. Well, if he's running a route, he's going to be more inclined to run a route because he has a chance to catch the ball. So it, it keeps them interested. It makes it fun. I like it. So, Coach, if the guy's here, old-fashioned line coaches want to see you get your ass to the hole and fight this dude and push him out here, what the fuck you doing? Run a fade and have, have him run fade. with him, have him run and with there's it. your block. There you go. Take him to the fucking I, end zone. <laughs> but yet line coaches still will be like, he didn't lay a hand on him. But he took him 35 <laughs> yards down the field. That, to me, is more impressive than fucking, look, I got him. I pushed him five yards <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? The game's different. And the other thing is, the other thing is, um, let's just say you're going no huddle and Jimmy's here. This guy's really good stud. You put a backup kid here, run him run fade. He's still running. This kid's playing both ways on the other team. You run it, you're, you're making him tired. I just, to me, going fast and with a purpose can be very, very beneficial to me. I always tell the kids this. Is that your your uh, battery charge on your phone? Is is that? So you need to be charged up. I always say charge up your phone. They understand that if my phone is at ten percent, ain't fucking working. So if they're ten percent on our end or their end, it's either advantage or disadvantage. And that's how we talk to the kids. We want to get their battery charge. So they'll tell me flat out. They go, Coach, fifty six is dead. His battery's done and we attack it. But it's it's those buzzwords that the kids comprehend with our philosophy of going. Now, I don't want to always say fast. I want to say this. And my doctor got me to do interval training. Interval training is when your blood goes fast and then slow and then fast again and then slow. And by doing that, you sweat more. So I started incorporating that stuff with our offense. So we're going to go tempo. Tempo to us is the rhythm of the music. It's like going to a nightclub and you got Barry Manilow playing, it's slower, and then you got the fast music, and then you got the slow music, and then you got the middle music. You have to be able to control yourself to the beat of the drum. And that's how we do it. So our tempo is that we're in control and we know how to do it. The defense has no fucking idea what we're doing or what our progression is. We might be going fast for a little bit and then stopping. And the defense is like, whoo. And then we get right on the ball and then we do another play or then we might take 30 seconds off the next time. They have no idea when you are stopping. It's like conditioning. Coach, how many more? You're running to I fucking puke. Ugh, right? You get that? That's how you want the defense to be. That's my philosophy on what we do. I love doing that stuff. What's up? I said, that's fantastic. Coach, I want to, I just want to say thank you, man. I, 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 uh, you know, I, I was coaching at uh, William Patterson this past year and uh, I, I sat there. in on this and I, I really enjoyed this. I, I got some stuff out of it. So I just want to say thank you. Coach, I'm from William Patterson. Oh, okay. I went there with Jerry Gallagher. Okay. Really, really nice guy. Outstanding. Yeah. What year were you there? Uh, I, I was just with them this, this past year throughout the you whole time. Co- you know Pat Moran? No, I was I was coaching the wideouts there this, this this past year. So I started Greg Lusardi. Yeah, Greg Lusardi coached me. Okay, yeah, I worked with Greg. He's another another great guy. Yep. 100%. What's your last name? Caniglio. Oh, okay, cool. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you, coach. I thank you again. I appreciate this. Yeah. I mean, this is, let's keep this up. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep you guys on the email list. And, um, you know, I mean, I got, let me see. I'm going to just show you what I got because I'm great. Again, I was the only head coach at William Patterson, Bornegan, um, 
you know, and uh, I'm going to tell my wife, I just was talking to somebody from William Patterson. She gets mad at me, my wife, that she tells me to go to the store and pick up five ingredients and I forget all fucking five. Right. And I'm like, what was it? She's like bread, eggs, milk, blah, blah. She finds it amazing that I can't remember five things she told me to do, but yet I can recite coach Gallagher's speeches before every fucking football game in college word for word. You know, it's because we love football, right? Good. But I have every play here, guys, for everything I ever did. Because now I got a question for you, coach. Yeah. Do you feel like that running a snag concept is too slow developing for an RPO? Um, No, no. When you say snag, you're talking three, a three man snag or two. Either way. The main thing. Motion, we, we do a lot of motion into it. We'll bring the guy across and he'll just kind of chip the end on the way out to run a little arrow route underneath it. And that outside yeah. receiver is running the snag, inside is running a, a corner. Yeah, you're basically running a, uh, to me, is a, um, a stick concept. So you're doing, yeah, you're getting in that so. area, right? Yeah. So you're doing something like this, he's yeah. doing this. Yeah. And if you're RPO and running this, you're throwing that. Yeah. We're putting pressure on that outside on that outside linebacker guy in there. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about it is what happens if you're doing this and he collisions this guy, he runs through the, the areas open, but where are you, dude? Where you know, you just got his collision. Because he's pushing vertical. Let's just say he drops and then he kind of collisions him like he's doing an under. That, that, that to me, that would be my only. There's nobody threatening this way to keep this this guy in conflict. Well, that's why we bring Z. We bring Z across. Oh, okay. And yeah. He, <clears throat> he does a little arrow route underneath. Oh, okay. So you run yeah. a bunch concept. Yeah. 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 Cool. Oh yeah. Because we gotta yeah. make him choose. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna get burned one way or another. So. Coach, we run. Yeah, like you, like you do. You run this. With that, we'll do this in our five-step drop. Okay. So I like that. But I, yeah, I like. We just been I, having I, trouble getting that X guy. We got we, we got a kid that's out there this year is pretty smart. He can read and find the open holes to set up. But before the guys were just, they just didn't understand how to find the open pockets. They didn't know how. Steps. Coach, here's what you're right. And here, as a receiver coach, what I do is this. Kids don't know how it feels like when, like, like when we're tackling, like, how does it, like, what's a perfect tackle feel? So I tell my coaches, get to that point where they wrapped up and they rolled their hips. Now work backwards, rewind. And they need to know what it feels like and then work backwards from it. In other words, if you're an X and you're facing the quarterback like this and he catches the ball here, this is what we want. So we got to work backwards to here to get back to this spot. Cause we always teach getting to it, but maybe they should know how it feels like to be here already and then work backwards to it. Like, like a rewind. When you're watching film, we always gotcha. rewind and yeah, we get to that, that, that to me, again, kids all learn differently. Um, but to me, we work backwards. Like, like example, we do last leg of routes to save their legs. So instead of running, you know, the post out of here, we'll just get to here and we'll signal when we want him to run the post. Um, Cause they have to know how it feels like to get there. And then they understand it. They go, Oh, I, I get it now. I get it. So kids are a little different, but that's a very like spacing. You know, if you ran spacing, they need to know where to go, where to be, you know, on the spacing, right? So we used to run a spacing concept, zone, an area, right? You know, so, and if they're not in the area, the play don't work. So that's the only thing that we do. You know, I'm very, I teach things differently with my receivers because I was a receiver coach. Um, you know, hey, I, Rob. I, yeah, you, you find it with like high school kids since all they want to do is play Xbox and they don't really study the game. 
that right. it's easier to teach landmarks than it is area. Mm -hmm. Matt, Matt, you know what the are from each other. Oh, you just oh. broke up. I didn't hear what you said. But the kids don't even know how far hash marks are. So we're talking about spacing of a field and the hash marks. We lost them. They don't even know what the fuck we're talking about with hash marks. Like they don't know like that, that how the field is broken up. They didn't even know how far the field was. How many yards? So yeah, they don't even know field side from boundary side. Uh, they don't know that. They don't. No, they don't know anything. They, they don't, don't teach not. that. They don't teach that on Madden. The, the the old slang that how we you know they don't they don't get it they just don't get it so sometimes I I sometimes confuse them um, it's like a joke they don't even understand it you know Matt I I have a thing where I, if I want to block the mic with the H back every year I did it but this year for some reason they didn't know it. And I kind of coached it real quickly. I said, I said, so when I go Tyson, Tyson, you you know who you're blocking. And I walked away, right? He had no idea that if we said Tyson with a boxer, I think that we think Mike Tyson. Well, that means you block the Mike. He had no fucking idea who the Mike, who, who even Mike Tyson was. Like, like, coach, who the hell is that? I had to say that he was on that movie, whatever that movie was in Las Vegas. Um, um, Hangover. Whatever. Yeah, Hangover. He only knew him from the movie. They didn't know he was a... These kids, you don't know what they're thinking or what they're taught, what their background is. They don't, you know, they don't know exactly what we're talking about. Um, you know, uh, example, when you say cock to the ball, they're like holding their pecker. Like, what? Like, like, like they just don't understand uh, football terms. They no. just don't. And that's something we're trying to teach our, our middle school coaches to start with terminology. Yeah. You know, because when they come up to the varsity level, if we have to do that shit, we're so far behind. Matt, and we, yeah, but we, we did. still have to do it because Matt, it's did, not taught on that. During the COVID, I said, we're going to work backwards. We're going to teach a class on Google Classroom and give them quizzes. So when I met with each physician groups, I told my coaches, give me 10 10 buzzwords that these kids are going to need to know during the year. 10. And we're going to quiz them. We're going to teach them it. And then we're going to quiz them it and see if they know it. It could be snap count. It could be, you know, combo blocks that you commonly say, tactic, or to learn the basic verbiage that when we see them after the COVID, they're going to kind of know what we're talking about a little bit. And that worked for us. It really worked because we don't sometimes teach a lot because we're on the field they're not in the classroom sometimes the classroom clear it out slow it down that's what we want to do that's what matt our best games were when we didn't practice we played saint john vienne a parochial school all right a team uh, asbury park pulled out and didn't want to play us for covid so then we're playing um we're playing St. John Vianney two days before, uh, two days later. The first day, um, I just got the call at three o'clock. I took everybody off the field and said, we're going to watch film. We're not even practicing. Now, St. John Vianney's good. We watch film. We get on the field the next day. We usually do a walkthrough. We did a semi-practice uh, in the field. We kicked the shit out of them. Hey, these kids... You know, we overcoach sometimes. We we do all this. If the kids know what to do, we want to just put fuel in the gas tank and just go. Because after a while, we just overcoach. We just we just just overcoach. I keep it really simple, and I want to make sure to my coaches, I'm more concerned as the gas tank full than that we have to go and do all these drills and practice. You know, by the middle of the season, you're like, dude, we're ready. We're good. So that's my theory with the kids. It's the pulse. It's the pulse of the stuff. You don't want kids shutting down and doing that stuff. No, and that's so. why we keep our practice two hours maximum. You know, yeah. we, we go in there, we get it done, uh, especially like uh, Mondays when we do our install stuff. 
we go in, quick chalk talk on what we're going to install, go out on the field, run through it, uh, do some runs, loosen them up, and that's it on Monday. Tuesday, we yeah. get a little more in-depth, but it's never over two hours because you won't get anything out of them. You're not going to get any more out of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. Is uh, Mario here? Mario? That's your William Patterson, buddy. Yes, sir. Oh, what's that? Mario, you asked me, do I do tempo? Is that what you, I'm just reading your thing? Oh, that was, yeah, that was in the beginning. So, and, and you answered it. Yeah, you guys are, you guys are tempo and you guys vary your Puzzle. tempo. So. Yeah, coach, there's many tempos we do. We, we will, um, if I say easy, we're always in the, the, the tempo that I last said. So if I said easy, easy, then that means it's easy on their eyes. They look at me. So that's sugar huddle. So I could say sugar huddle to them and the kids don't fucking know what it is, but they know what easy on the eyes are because they like to look at all the girls. But I'll tell you right now, every one of them checks me out. When I go easy, easy, the eyes are right on me. So when I say easy, easy, it's echo easy. That means, that means fucking look at coach Davis. So, but the word easy is all that shit wrapped in one. So by doing that, I let that, I talk to them. So I don't really do hand signals all the time, but I talk to them, you know, good job. Is that like, it's about the other team doesn't know what we're saying. So I'll use my different language and kind of make a joke once in a while. Like, uh, you know, it's funny. And we, it's a common period. And then we go on the ball. Now, if we want to go fast or repeat a play, we call Peter. So if I want to get on a ball and I like to play, I go Peter, Peter, because our RPOs, we have sometimes five different people that can get the ball. If it's 20 personnel, three, four people can get it. it depending on the stuff that we're doing, uh, pre-snap or post-snap, that multiple people can get the ball. I love to go fast, repeat, flip the play, same concept. It's fucking awesome. Sometimes we keep giving it to the same person. Sometimes we give it to other people. But during our practice drills, all right, when we go into our um, um, empty stuff, I tell the quarterback after he makes a certain read, he's got to give it to somebody else. So when we do it and Peter, Peter, it, he's got to give it to the swing or, or the bubble. Peter, Peter, he gives it to the gift. When we do it on air, Peter, Peter, read it, do it. And everybody is expecting the football all the time. And we weren't in a communi communication drill with that. Um, we do things like, I'm sure you guys do the same thing too. We package two plays together. So, or we package three. So we'll call, if I want to go three, again, they don't fucking know who it is, but we go Rocky. Rocky Balboa, who the hell is that, right? So if we go Rocky, we go left, right, left, boom, right? So we'll go three plays. So if we go fire, fire, Rocky, Rocky, with the three plays for the week, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing this. It's awesome. They like that shit. Um, then you can Peter that. You can do stuff like that. Or our favorite play might be um, power. So we just win. Uh, we, we threw the ball, um, you know, for a fade. We get uh, scream out fire, fire. In our words, we go calm, whatever. We're running power with an RPO. Kong no, or, or excuse me, we'll just go Kong off, Kong off. And we get on the ball and we got out, fade, ISO, Kong. The teams don't know what we're doing, but that's that. I, 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 the way I teach it, because my lineman likes to, my coach likes to get in a huddle, you know, digest the play, do all that shit. He changed years ago. So I always tell the kids this, you guys want to walk fucking set, seven yards back? And then seven yards back up, that's 14 yards instead of just getting on the ball. Do you want to do that? Because that equals how many miles in the game? They look at me and go, I want to go no huddle. Good. That's what we're doing. That's how you teach it. All right? So we don't waste time. We get on the ball, do it. I love the way we practice our no huddle. And I love numbers. I love to – so we do – I break it up into three groups. In other words, if we go inside run, inside run, I will have um, like three groups, three groups of skilled kids and maybe two groups of line. And we go, let's just say we're doing a, let's just say we're going to do a 12 minute indie. We're going to go no huddle, no huddle. And we're going to go um, two, 
to two minutes. And in that two minutes, we're going to run three and a half to four plays a minute. So we're going to go, let's just say um, on the high end, work with me, four times two would be 15. It, wait, what's that? Four plays? No, four plays a minute. That's eight. <laughs> All right. What, I, what I'm trying to say is maybe not all of them are running all these plays, but the tempo of the offense is going eight plays to max. So let's just say six to eight, six to eight, six to eight. So we teach our kids. We just don't do, all right, first unit go for 10 minutes, and then you go take a break. That's not how you play a football game. You go on the field. You go off. You come back on the field, you go off, you come back up. That's how they play. So we should practice. So we're going to go first, first wave. We're going to go Peter, Peter, flip, flip, six to eight plays. And we're keeping track. The second time they get back on, now we just go first and second. So now we'll go a minute and a half, a minute and a half. And we'll get around, uh, let's just say five to seven, five to seven. Like that. So that's three minutes, five, seven, nine. And then we're going to go probably one minute, one minute, and then try and get around three to four or three to four, whatever. So we'll go 10. So these first group will go 18. Second group will go 18. First group did around six or eight. We did 36, 42. We did 50 plays in 12 minutes. And I give the defense all the extra guys to do it. To me, that is, and at the end of the at the end of the uh, day, we talk about how many plays we get. We do it during seven on seven. We do that, yeah. So we'll go fifty. Then we go team and keep the same type of format, and we'll run a hundred plays in a in a group run and a team. Maybe not as much in team because we RPO it. Let me change that because the ball move it. So this might be scaled down to forty, but that's a lot of plays. Coach, when you're that's doing that, how are you getting your defense to keep up with the tempo? Two groups. They have two groups. So um, they're tired. Um, so they'll go two groups. I let my D coaches coach the way they want. They actually have a team of guys on the side, two groups. Now, it's not great, talented guys, but it's, <clears throat> it's, it's you know, it's shields with legs and they're getting reps. They're definitely getting reps. And, and, and we you, don't. You pay your scout D switches up between an odd and even front? No, not really, Matt. I mean, depends. No, no. You mean right in the middle of the practice? Yeah. Not really. It, not, no. I mean, we, we, we find out that if we switch it up and give them a different front, the linemen act like somebody just stole their, their, their girlfriend. They don't know what the hell to do. Yep. You're right. You're right. We not necessarily. I mean, I mean, yes, the defensive coaches, I tell them they can do whatever they want. And all of a sudden they're doing these fucking exotic type of stunts. And uh, to we, me, we keep it patient, but we switch it up between an odd and even front just because, you know, who, who knows what we're going to say. Matt, during our camps, I tell my coaches to coach, they like it because they're coaching up those kids to what they're want, what they're doing in practice and all that stuff. Now, during a a game week, we don't do it like this. We do this more in camp. During a game week, we really don't like run, you know, dicks in the dirt, that type of stuff. We don't yeah. do that. Okay. So, yeah. Because I, I know, like, if, if we switch the front up, we got to take at least two or three minutes to explain the new blocking team. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, 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 luckily, I don't have to deal with the lineman, man. I just tell my running back, run the butts and keep going. Yeah, yeah. Um, linemen get easily confused. And it might just be a fart on the sideline. They, they look like it's just like, what the fuck? But, yeah, it's funny. But the linemen, I'm very, very um, cautious with them. Because it's almost like they have a buzzword in their head going, somebody says, I fucked up, I quit, I'm fucking done. It's so they're fun, right? I mean, it's almost like you always blame the line or you do this. You always hear it with the skilled kids. You know, one guy comes right through 
right in the middle, right in the middle. Um, alignment is like, fuck this. I can't like, uh, you almost got to be overly uh, positive with them. That's okay. I understand you missed the block. It's, you know, you know, everything's going to be good. You know, like meanwhile, uh, one, of, one of the fronts that we put on, <clears throat> we run two twos and two fives against a oh. spread. What? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll That's angle. Tough. Huh? That's tough to block our, our um, slide protect. Yeah. Yeah. And we got whoever the, the um, tackler knows is away from the back. They're angled. So what they'll do is they'll line up in the two and they're going to press the hip of the center and then squeeze their ass into the guard. So he he's covered. He can't pull. Right. And the center, he's going to be occupied too. So we're, we're occupying two offensive linemen with, with one player. And luckily we have a guy that was like, I think he came in third in the state as a heavyweight mm -hmm. wrestler and he's tough as nails. So oh, he, he runs it great, but that screws a lot of teams up. Yeah. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to talk about? Um, you don't want to talk defense? And I hate that. I really <laughs> coach, coach, I get after my old linemen. They, uh, they know what's coming. If they mess up, they know they're, they're going to get an earful. Uh, but, but they know I coach every kid on the team the same way. So they're not getting preferential treatment. Kids today don't want to play line. That is true. Baby. <laughs> you that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you like Odell. Maybe it's just a barnacle, but kids want to wear number one. It's amazing. No, um, they, any, every kid, even Lyman, wouldn't want a single digit number. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Matt. It's crazy. It's just we got, our, 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 we got no kids that want to put the back. <laughs> what, what's that, coach? We got the opposite problem. We got to make the kids play quarterback. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm dead serious. My son's going to be starting quarterback, and he'd rather play receiver all day long. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> well, no, there's a reason why people don't play quarterback, because there's a lot of pressure on them, you yeah. know? So. They could be yeah. the hero or the zero. And we're, yeah. we're, we've, been pretty, we've been pretty run heavy in the past, so, I mean, it's not too much pressure on them. Right. You know, but, Where are you located at, Coach? New Mexico. Okay. Awesome. Bernalillo, Coach, right outside of Albuquerque. Coach, I had I had a quarterback. I do a quarterback academy um, before the season because I've learned that during the season, let's say your first quarterback got hurt or he's sick, the second quarterback is not feeling well, it takes away from your practice. And then you start teaching a kid going, all right, the snap count is down. <laughs> right? You, you know, you know, we all know what we're talking about with that. So I do a I do a get it out of your system um, quarterback academy. So whoever wants to be a quarterback or fuck around with it, you're not missing any other positional practices for those three days. You could be with me. And my coaches hate it because I let even linemen. But you know what? I build morale up. Everything's great. So you got some guys that are like 265. Damn. Said, who gives a shit? You know? So who gives a shit? So we do all that stuff. I, I let the quarterback etiquette, we go over everything, right? So after those three days, everybody seems to know what the quarterback has to do during the season. To a point, to a point, to a point. Um, so um, the one year I had a kid, I had a, two sophomores and I had a senior. And we did all these, and, I, and I, had, I had statistics for different things that we did. And, I, and my coaches, um, one of my coach's son was one of the guys. So he's like thinking he should be the quarterback. And his name was Detroit. And uh, he goes, so who's the quarterback? And I had to make an announcement. And I said, the quarterback's going to be San Giacomo. Are you fucking kidding me? He was the best receiver, best quarterback here. He did all these drills. He did this. Why? Tell me why. I said, because the other kid can't play any other position. He goes, what's that supposed to mean? So Mike's got a sacrifice. I go, that's sacrificing. He's going to play wide receiver. <coughs> the kid was 6'4". Uh, he grew to 210 receiver. And the other kid was a kid that couldn't move, but he could throw it and sling it. And the senior just didn't have it. So eventually, the quarterback who moved to receiver became a first-team All-State receiver. The quarterback got a scholarship to Tulane 
and was like ninth all time in New Jersey throwing through for 6,700 yards. But he was the worst that we, we were documenting everything and all that. Sometimes you got to go with your, your gut feeling and common sense. And, you know, this kid, they both had to be on the field. And we made, we, we, that's how we built our quarterbacks. But, you know, whatever positions we're weak at, we do an academy for, you know? So um, tight end, yeah. everybody wants to play at our place. <laughs> tight end. No, I mean, we put, coach, we're like tight end you. We got four guys that we sent <laughs> division one. And all of a sudden, you know, people want to play tight end, you know? So we move them a little closer to the ball. And I tell guys, you want to touch the ball every play? Hell yeah. Well, go center. What? I said, yep. You're going to touch the ball a little more than the average person. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, we we're, love we're those running, linemen. We're we running linebacker linemen. university out here. We, we're producing linebackers. Our last two years, our MVP of the team have been linemen. We were just, you're like, you know, I mean, they were good. Yeah. Our linemen had a great season. We had all five got nominated for all state and four of them made it. Which state? New Mexico. Oh, okay, good, awesome. Yeah, how many high schools? Like how many high schools go through there? Oh gosh. Oh man, uh, we're four A, um, and I know there's at least twenty five four A schools, maybe the same number of five A and six A, if not more. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of three A, small little towns and. Stuff like that. They even have, you know, all the way down to eight-man football out here because they just have small little towns. Wow. But wow. it's competitive. It, football, New Mexico's always been a basketball state, but it's starting to flip football. It really is. Uh, there's good football players all over the place. There really oh, yeah. is. Really, oh. There really, really is. Um, but I appreciate yeah. this, Coach. This is, this is some stuff I've been wanting to get into. Let's um, keep doing it. What would you? I do want to talk. Um, there's a lot of. I mean, again, I have all these schemes. Coach, on um, your pull, are you are you reaching with the play side tackle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, we're not a great pin and pull team. I mean, we're not. Um, the rule you said pin and pull. Yes, sir. All right. So, um, the way we teach it. I hate it when you have two overhand guys here. So let's do it not with that. Let's do it like this. We don't run to the tight end a lot. It's funny because we RPO away. But our pin and pull is we're reading this block. So we're going to try and um, reach them. If we can't reach them, we're going to block them out. All right. So our pin and pull is if you have a guy inside you on the opposite gap, you are pinning them, right? So he's pinning them. He's pinning them. And then our pull guy is here. That's how we teach it. I, I don't over teach it. I don't, um, you know, again, whatever um, fronts we get, different guys are pulling. So he's here. He's here. Um, He's like that. We have him pull. We have him pull. Like that. And that's that's the real good pin and pull when you have two guys. And then we do this shit. Yeah, I saw that on the film. No. Yeah. Sometimes, Coach, if they're misaligned, let's just say, let's just say somebody's like this. There's a guy there. There's a guy there. There's a guy there. There's a guy there. Let's just say they're like this. We do this. So he's pulling. He's pulling, you know, he blocks out. So it could be all different guys that, that you know, are pulling. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's neat. We run the pin and pull off of stretch what, at a, uh, when he's here. When he's here, it's the pin and pull where we're RPOing it. And then, um, uh, bup, 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 bup. Uh, what's the other way? Well, if he's in uh, pistol, would that be pink then? Uh, yes, yes, yep, yep. Um, and then when we do, um, when he's under center, 
he pitches it, which is pin and pull. Yeah. We won't, if he's under center, we won't pink it because there's going to be somebody pulling. And I don't want the quarterback to get collisioned. Gotcha. We would run zone to throw it there. But but if he's in a pistol coach, yes, because he's here. Mm-hmm. And then he can take one step back and throw it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then on that, are you are your receivers play side blocking or are they still running? Uh, on, on, on pin and pull, we will block. Okay. If I RPO'd it, it's funny how you said that. It's funny how you said that because I did a study on that. So let's just say we're doing this. And let's say I said, why Peps? Why Pepsi? Whatever. He does this. He does this. He does this. He does this. Again, my theory is, again, by his route, he blocks or widens the bounds. So if he's this guy's right here, he might be running with him on a bubble like this. Does that make sense? Yep. And he's doing this, which creates a lane right here. I don't want to, ch- especially if I'm minoring in it, I don't want to change too much. I don't want to be like um, Hawaii, no, uh, Pepsi, um, you guys have to block because the blade's coming to you. Mm-hmm. I don't want them thinking, just what do you do on Pepsi? I do this, do it. And and that's that. That's that's all I do because they'll expand and he'll run and then he'll cut it up here. And yet this the guys will be out here like this because we're doing this. Right. Yep. So I don't overcoach it. You know, I know there's a lot of coaches. do they know that they're not they're not an option on that? Or does no, that- they are. They are because if we're doing this, and let's say this guy's in the box, he's coming and he's way off, he's coming, he's oh, taking a he's, snap. He's, and throw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can throw it. That's his pre-snap. Yeah, we yeah. can, we 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 can throw that. Right. Um, so, yeah. Because pop is your post-snap. Pop, pop. No pop. I mean, is, I mean the why on why. Yeah, why would be your only. If focus. you're writing a pop, this is a read. These are pre-snap throws. Right, right. So, so it's built in. So in other words, he can pre-snap and throw it, or he can read it and throw. It. That that's right. all it is. I got you, coach. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, um, I'm not going to change that because right now on our outside zone we have them play side blocking. So, I have coach. Some- I'm gonna talk- I'm going to tell you, Bobby Acosta, a good friend of mine. Um, yeah. he, he's with Noma Zone. He's in that fraternity people. Mm-hmm. He came to my he came to my practice, and I think he was at Syracuse at the time, and he's teaching the pin and pull. And he they 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 play around with it. So in other words, when he does this, he used to have him like ride it with him and then turn and throw. So they're always tweaking things, and sometimes right. in their cult of people, one after one season, they changed it. Yeah, and I'm like Bob. I, I I'm fucking keeping this the same. Like I'm not changing. He's like, no, try it with the scrape and do it. I go, no, I. This is what I do. <laughs> but like, I, yeah, I mean, you taught me a lot with what we're doing, but this is what we're doing with our program, right? You know? Um. So, um, yeah, we don't have a million run plays, but we we have the same plays as everybody else. We do. Um, that fungo play is something special. Uh, yeah, can you really, draw that up? I was just going to ask you real quick. Can can you draw it up? Right here. Yeah, I got yeah. it right here. That's good shit. Are you guys pretty balanced, Coach? Uh, you know what? In terms of our passing yardage, in eighteen in no eighteen years of football, uh, fifteen varsity seasons, I think there's a hundred and twenty something yards that separate our run and pass. Wow. 120. We throw, it's like, it's like um, I don't even know what the number is. Let's say 20,700, 20,684. Like, yeah, we're right there. What about play wise, play wise, like run versus pass? Coach, I'll, I'll call a play. Let's say we call Taco uh, Pepsi. Yeah. You're thinking it's an aggressive pass play. I'm thinking it's a multiple at facet. Like, that's what we do. Like it's either run or pass. So right, it's right. not, I explain to the parents what we're doing. I teach them RPO stuff on yeah. what we're doing. 
be, to to alleviate some of the coach you're throwing the ball every goddamn time man what's going on right like like yeah well talk to your son he's the quarterback right no, you know like but yeah. i do that for a reason and i said you know don't be yelling at jimmy for not knowing the plays when he's running a fade when we're handing the ball off so we kind of educate our parents that like almost like we don't know where the ball is going even though we <laughs> do know, even though we do know right uh now coaching point is Let's just say your quarterback is making the bad decisions. Mm -hmm. You can have all your assets go to places. So you're running Y Pepsi. He can look at you and you could tell him gift. He can look at you and you can tell him gum. He can look at you and throw fade. He can look at you and say read or whatever you're saying. So then he knows which aspect he's looking at. Right. Opposed to him like being all over the place mm -hmm. nine out of 10 times. He's not, it's common sense. You look, if you're a quarterback or a coach that's standing behind the, the, the offense, looking at the defense and you go, Oh God, if I ever was, if I had this view, I would kill him. <laughs> yeah. I, well, you, all you're doing is making the quarterback your eyes. Right. And you're teaching them pink, black, or ugly. Uh, let me show you the ugly first. I have a picture of my buddy, Matt Machenko. And um, I'm kidding. What I do with, it's so funny. My coaches always think that like, the other team knows our schemes. I go, what? Are you, why would you think that? But um, so I yell the play out. I don't give a fuck. Like, stop yeah, it. Yeah, everyone's talking to me, and they're like, Coach, they need signals. And I'm like, dude, they still have to stop the play. They don't know. Yeah, if they're thinking about my signals, we're going to just gut them. Um, where is my ugly shit? Uh, ugly, 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 ugly. Oh, orange. Here it is. All right. All right. So, ugly to me is storyline is same side. So, I tell them this, guys, all guys are ugly. In my mind, you're ugly. And I teach it. They go, why do you say, and you go, you want to know why I say they're ugly? Because we're the same sex. And they're looking at me like, where are you going with this? I said, you hear me out? This is a story. All guys are ugly because we're the same sex. And I don't like guys. I mean, we're the same sex. So they know that if we go ugly, ugly, the run play is the same side all the time. Now, who has to know that the quarterback and the tailback, not the lineman. We're, we're, we're bending it. You know how you go in one way and you bend it the other way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, coach? Right. Right. That's what we do. Now, when we run bubble all the time, this guy loves to do this. He loves to cover it and on the snap sneaks in the box. Right. So when we go ugly, we're reading him. So we're going to read it, put the ball on the hip, and we're going to ride it. So if he's coming here and showing it, we take the ball out, and then we run uh, – oh, my bad. We run an out. Take it back one step and throw the, throw the out. That's what we do. Or we can run hikers where he's a hitch. So he comes in a box, one step, throw the hiker. That's it. It's real simple. So we go ugly, ugly, um, which means that we're reading the outside linebacker too. And that's that. So I don't really have a clip. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. We run pin and pull on this. Uh, ba, 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 ba. All right, let me show you this. We run a pin and pull, the quarterback sweep, and he's reading the outside linebacker, and what we're running is off. It's actually pretty cool. So think of when you're pinning and pulling, these guys are like this, right? They're pulling. So this guy is running his out. This guy is running his fade. And we're reading this guy, whoever this guy is. We're doing all this pulling. We tell this guy to get with and block the first guy that's over top this guy, like right here. So we're getting wide. The quarterback's doing this. And there we go. He's reading this guy. This guy comes up. We dink it. He plays deep. He tucks it and runs. By that time, the linemen are downfield. So let's see this. He 
he runs it. So he got soft. There you go. Uh, all right, that's it. I don't have a lot of stuff on this. Um, you know, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, we're having fun with it. Again, we minor in it, but that's what we do. Um, yeah, I mean, I got coach, I mean, I know this looks like a lot, but this is my 18 years of stuff we do. We do. Um, you know, I mean, our five-step drop is our 90-80s. Our waggles are, are stuff I think that we like. We do jet sweep action stuff, some years more than others. Again, these are more more years than others. Is that, you know, um, you know, our, all our just different concepts. We're a throwing team. We throw the ball. Every year we have a thousand yard game, a thousand yard season with court, with our running game. So, so we were always run for a thousand yards, either by committee or by one person. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we do throw. We're not afraid to take chances. Because again, I do believe that if you go to Atlantic City and if you have 11 showing, and if you don't double down on that 11, you are not giving your chance to make some money. Right. If you're going to play very, very, uh, very, very passive with 11 showing, you're just going to be spinning your wheels. So if you have 11 showing and playing blackjack, double down. Mm -hmm. And that meaning, meaning we're going to take what's open and steal it. We're not going to say, ah, I don't know. We're going to take it. We're not afraid to take what's being given. If that makes sense. Yeah, I got you, Coach. Oh. Um, scared yeah, money I mean, don't make money. What? Scared money don't make money. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't say too loud. My wife's listening. To, she probably heard me say Atlantic City. Oh. Um, yeah. I mean, let's keep doing these things, guys. Um, I'm going to pick a topic again. Um, what we? Oh, well, I'm sorry. I didn't talk about the fungo. That's my bad, Coach. Yeah, no, no. Let's do that. Let's do that. I mean, the Y cross game. Jesus Christ, there's so much shit. Um, you guys do Y cross? Who us? Yeah, we actually we actually put it in this year. I I, I asked if we could put it in, and they, then we put it in. Y cross is waggle, except you're stri dropping straight back. Yeah. We run oh, waggle. I'm gonna put in drop back Y cross or off a of play action. Yeah, I mean waggle. It's waggle routes, except you're dropping back and throwing it. You have the tight end crossing, and you got your combo routes, and it's really if you really break it down for a quarterback, is it's waggle, except he's dropping back now. Ooh, he can't hit the drag early because he didn't get there. So, kind of. Oh, I get it. Um, my. Thing. What were they saying? Oh, the uh, right here. Uh, where is Fungo? Fungo. There he is. Again, this evolved to um, picture this fallback on this side running it. Is it. Okay, so he's doing this. You can do that. Okay, you can have him come here to here. Um, and give it a different look, or you could keep them same side and go with that. That's all we do. Whatever run play you're doing, the fullback's in the game, but he's not blocking. So right now we're running one back zone because the fullback is going to the behind a line of scrimmage, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. We're playing around with it. So if we're doing uh, bah, 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 bah. Oops, and, and I got mostly cut up from a college. We read the inside linebacker there, so that would be a black. So I'm scratching my black wristband and going, Taco, no fungo. Quarterback gets on the ball, black backside linebacker down, said hot, and he knows it's a fungo concept. He's now going to the outside, he throws it. Coach, all the eye, and, and you can't, and don't, I don't want to hear people go, well, pop and now fungo. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. You're talking about the receivers learning a certain scheme. They're going to be like, okay, we get it. You coach up the quarterback. You train his eyes and you let him know that he needs to know where everybody's doing. 
on, on, on the pot and then what everybody's doing on fungo. Fungo is easy. Fungo is a baseball bat. You're hitting. So everybody's blocking. That's the only time receivers are all blocking, that and paint. Fullback's in a flat. So he don't have all those options. He's either here or there. There you're going. If you do it with a tight end, oh, uh, if you do it with a tight end, we did something different. We just had him on a snap, get wide, let him travel here while you have all the receivers to this side, and then you throw it here. We, I just had fun with it. I called up Bobby. I said, Bob, what do you think? He goes, I like it. So he sent it to Noel and his guys, and, you know, they, they do their twists, and, you know, they might not like it. They might like whatever, but we just have fun. Whatever works for everybody. So our fungo play, did you want to see the plays? Can I see it with the, with the tight end going and then you're throwing it to the fullback if you got it? Mm -hmm. I, I coach, it's mostly we did that in practice. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't film it. Did that make sense? This is something that I was practicing all offseason but did not run it a lot in the game. I didn't have to. All right. So there he is. So um, he doesn't run sniffer. He has them in a in like an offset tight end. So he's going to get flat to the left. He's reading that inside linebacker, and they're running taco to the right. Okay. And this is a college. All right. And as you can see, and here's the other thing they don't do. I, I uh, block on this. Because what happens is if these guys watch, they're running routes and watch the defenders. Let's just say the read was to throw it. This guy's going to get his ass kicked by this guy. So we block on it. I run what I'm doing. My philosophy is I'm going to run a three by one bubble screen without a third receiver in the play. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's no third receiver here because he, I have him in a sniffer. I bring him, I leak him out on the snap to create that third receiver when the ball is snapped instead of them tilting their coverage. Is that, that's, do you, does that make a little sense? Yeah. That's what you, they can't roll it. it, it like yeah. they have to account for him as in the run game. I get it. So picture the receivers blocking for their guy. Look at, they're reading this guy right here. See what he does. In my offense, we would throw it. Right. That guy would have got, like you said, he got smoke because they cut the corner there. So, just, But think what we're doing. You're putting a guy in conflict. The guy in conflict's him, meaning if he does this, he does that. If he does, so in other words, he should be wrong every time. Really, the guy in conflict shouldn't make a fucking play. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it, it, by doing that, you see these run plays when they're running it, and they're not blocking them that's the greatest thing is that he's not, if he makes a freaking play, bone crushing hit, screw you guys. You made the wrong call. The quarterback. I mean, just watch his reaction. Is he, does he make a play? No, that's what you want. That's why you're running. Let's watch it right here. He's right here. Look at him. Look at that. Frozen. That's what you want. Right? This is ours. You, you already saw that. I don't have any other film of the tight end doing that. I just made it up. When he's tight end is tight, we get him out wide to create some type of guy blocking outside. Um, okay. Now, the way they teach it was this. And you're going to see it. He out leveraged him right now. So, he just kicked back and did it. He didn't even read it. Look at that. He kicked back. See, the running back thinks he's getting a the football. They're running rocket slip. They're running the rocket screen to the right, and they're throwing the fungo to the left. We have done that. I might have that in my clips. See the running back up top? He's running the slip. That's actually a good play. So they're running. So in other words, the quarterback – to throw the slip, he's got to give this guy love. So he steps back. If it's not there, he now turns and throws it here. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So the way I would call this 
would be, um, I would go um, rocket slip in my language. So then I, if we're in black and then I would go fungo, rockets to the right. So he's the guy I'm reading and we're running fungo. There we go. That's it. So if we're in black, what's the concept? What is it? Tell me coach. Is it pop? Is it fungo? Got it. So we're going rocket slip here, fungo. But he's got to read this guy to allow this to happen. And he hit him. He hit him. There you go. So one thing, when you get a college clip, you always get that, that two-way hit. You get the, the, the backside, all that shit. I mean, he outleveraged them. Look at that. Look at that inside linebacker. The other guy's getting whiff, and he doesn't even react right away. So look at this. Look, one, two, three. Look at that. He, didn't he outleverage him? There you go. Yeah. That's it. Yep. And that's the guy that normally you, you have the dip, most difficulty blocking when you run a screen. Exactly. Exactly. So, that's mm -hmm. why you SPO him or whatever you want to do. And I put it up here, Coach, when it says notes. So your eyes could say, okay, he threw it to the Z. So they're running um, fungo with some type of pop. I didn't know how to marry it together. So I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I'm sure I could do something like that. But see, he's popping it. It looks pretty. Everybody likes the end result. You know, everybody likes that. Oh, that's sweet when that happens. That was sweet. I mean, it's nice. So they're doing... So... Basically, what's going on is it's like running a bubble. When we run the bubble, we get the inside guy, he does the, this, he does that, he does this. Instead, the fullback's here now. He's not there. He's doing this. It's the same shit. Same shit. Rob, what college is this? St. Scholastica. That's in Minnesota, Matt. Oh, that's Bobby's shit then, right? Okay. Yeah, you know Bobby, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. He actually just texted me right now. Um, yep. And it's <laughs> funny. He, um, like, like you, you go in there and you're learning it and you have rules. And you say, Bob, but why did he do that? So then he goes, he goes, you got to let him, you got to let him ad lib with the play too. You got to let, like, they're very, they're very um, flexible with tolerance. You kind of like, they, they, they allow, well, we did that because he out leveraged them. So Bob, he didn't read it. He goes, well, he out leveraged them. So he took kick back and threw it. So you don't overcoach. Don't overcoach. Okay, Fungo, he's going to hit. Out leverage. That's that's what I like. I like the block. I like that. I mean, when we say fungo, and those guys, those receivers go, all right, coach, I don't know what fungo means. The, the fuck you don't. Like, really, seriously. It's amazing. But if I said fungo and it was post-corner, somehow they would remember it. But because it's a blocking scheme, <laughs> yeah, come on. Don't bullshit me. That was funny. Did you get that with kids? Go, it's the only time they block fungo and Peyton. They're like, oh, I didn't know what fungo was. What the fuck? Don't don't bullshit me. Have it, how, how easy could it be? You're never blocking except for fungo. I didn't know what fungo means. They're fucking blocking. That they're just like you don't need any other storyline. You block. Uh. That's how they are. And then I'm the asshole coach that makes our receivers block. One scheme. Yeah, I'm an ass. All right. See, I like the running plays off of the RPO. It just looks really, it just. Cleans the box. I'm going to tell you right now, I wish I knew this 15 years ago because, I mean, you're accounting for everybody blocking somebody in a run game in the past. Now you're not. You're occupying one of the defenders with some type of concept and you're allowing the lineman to double team somebody else. Yep. 
but we don't tell the lineman that it's an RPO. They block it just like if we were under center. I don't want them change, change, oops, change the rules. Cool. It's funny when you show film clips to people, they're like, oh, I want to see more plays with like 40 yards. I said, then go to my fucking track coach. What do you mean? Like, like, how do you, what plays do we have as coaches that, oh, here's this play that will get you 40. Like what? That's called a punt. Like plays that can get consistently five to eight yards. That's what I want to say. <laughs> that's what you get. That's what you get all the time. Coaches want to be like, coach, give me some clips, a scheme that gets me 40, 50 yards. Well, why wouldn't you, if that's the case, I run reverses all the time. Why wouldn't you run a reverse um, five times a game if you're averaging 20 yards every time you run it? I run it two, three times a game off of our um, waggle action. It's so funny. People go, oh, you had to run it the third time. Yeah, I like 20 yards. But yeah, I did. Oh, all the time. Saves me, man. That's awesome. I, you got to love that the back end zone shot with an RPL. Just watch how it opens up. Look at that. Look at, I mean, look at all that real estate. Look at that. Should have got a little more. But see, it's, it's good when you're watching St. Scholastica. They're D3. And these teams here probably would lose to a lot of hype. But it's still kids. You're coaching kids' schemes. You know? I mean, you ever hear Nick Saban and his staff, Sarkeesian, when he talks? And you're like, oh, wow. How did you get that receiver to blow by that kid? You know? <laughs> like, I mean, it's easy when you got five stars. It's all good. Good stuff. I'll tell you right now, do you guys RPO the play side linebacker? I haven't. The way we teach things, if I want, um, let's just say we're going pin and pull in our inside drill, and we usually uh, pop it. We read this guy. If he runs, I just tell the quarterback to replace him. There's your, there's your, instead of him reading the five technique and getting out here, it's quicker, quicker run straight up the field. We have so much fun with that shit. Um, any play that a fullback kicks somebody out, make an RPO. Make an RPO. So if you want to run ISO, everybody loves the fucking ISO. You block him, you do this, you do all this. This guy's here. This guy's fucking in his face like this. So, I mean, you could be in a gun at a pistol, run at him. If he flies to the ear, run some type of RPO over top of him. If he stays put and and, and, and takes it like a, you know, schoolyard bully, you think, just run the ball. But you can make, I mean, anybody that you put in conflict have an answer for it. It could be laterally. It could be, um, you know, it could be anything. The, 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 I mean, yeah, you could do it. I mean, you can entice him. You know, he meets him in a hole and bang, and we throw over top, right? I like the if you put the, the uh, sniffer on the opposite side and run your zone scheme and then have him come across and fill the same thing. So it's like an ISO, it's like an insert, inside zone. Ah, insert. Yeah, loop them. I like that. And then come around, and then you can run your RPO. You can, you can RPO the uh, the backside. You can RPO the backside linebacker if you wanted to. This guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're on inside zone. <laughs> Coach, the sniffer, the sniffer is like a guard. Yeah. So you're right. You're doing something like this. You know, he's in a hole. He runs with him, and then maybe you have an X and a Z doing this, and you're doing that. Yep. Yeah, good call. Yep. Yeah, we call that loop. So if the fullback is in the game, I tag it. 
So I'll go, hey, loop, loop. So he knows that he's going to loop over to the first gap. Oh, you know what? Like this. The hell, I got it. So he would, let's say he's a sniffer. He's going to loop over and do this. That's it. That's our tag. So why create a new run scheme? We would call it loop, loop. And then the run play, whatever it was. So we would actually ran um, taco. So taco to me is zone to the right and blocking back to the left. So let's just say we have a different defense here. Let's just say we have this. So we'll go taco, yes. Um, and then we'll go X Pepsi. He does this, he does that. We're going to read this dude because we're going to do this. But before I do it, I'll go, hey, loop, loop. Okay. So we give the formation. He knows on the snap, he's looping. And when he loops, he blocks the first linebacker to that side. So it's an ISO route, or ISO, right? Yeah. It's it. Yeah. We, we, it's inside zone. In, we run an insert. But yeah, it's, it's an ISO concept. Yep. So we're going to do this when we run this. The way how we do it. We combo to this. So we got two guys there. We block here. He's here. They block out now like this. And there's your window. And we read him. So we'll go loop, loop, taco, yes, uh, X Pepsi. All right. And I'm scratching my wrist. And only the quarterback look at me and goes, all right, it's black. So we're going to read it like this and bang and throw it. There you go. It's one back power. That's all it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. One back power. You know, no kick out. The guy's in a hole. I love the sniffer. It frees up the guard to do all the dirty work. I'll tell you what else I do. You could also false pull the guy. So, and still RPL, coach. So if we did the same formation like that, and we put him to the right, I go, hey, loop, loop. He goes, okay. Let's go taco, yes, X Pepsi. The same fucking play, but it's going to be a different reaction. We're reading this guy, but we're going to fuck with him, coach. Not only are we reading him, we're going to fucking attack him with a guard pulling. I mean, uh, the guy pulling. Opposite. So, you know, the other guys are here. So on loop loop, he goes and he goes here. We kick this dude out. Kick this fucking dude out. We're doing this, doing this. Everybody's blocked and we're just doing this. But yet we're reading him. So either he's moving on his own, he sees something going, but he has no idea he's got somebody behind him. You like that? We, we, yeah, we that's what that's, I, I think it has, the way it's, it's blocked right there, it has the ability for to cut back. No, it's split zone. It's yeah. split zone, except your yeah. guy, you put him in the hole. That's all it is. Yeah, right? because you're, you're, yeah. You're going to be able to wash the nose. You're going to be able to, unless the nose tries to spark across the center's face, but you're going to get pushed that way so that the tailback can, can conceivably, you know, follow the H, cut it back. You don't need the fullback even in there. You take the fullback out, it's still blocked. Everybody's blocked. We're reading him. All we're doing is bringing an ISO to here. Well, yeah, yeah, right. He can. But we don't teach it like, okay, now you got an extra guy in a hole there. You can cut it back. We teach it normal because if the fullback wasn't there and he cut it back anyway, he should not make the play coach. Cause he's doing some, something like this. If we hand the ball off. Right? right. Yep. So he, he knows that he should be able to bend it back anyway. Cause this dude is not stuffing a hole. And that's that. So our quarterback's eyes are helping the running back. If you get the football, you're not getting, we say your penis knocked off. Right. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we gotta do it to their terms. I like I like the, I like that. I like the zone insert. I think it's yeah. Because if you did split zone, if you did split zone, the true split zone, like this, he blocks that first gap like that, which is a bitch. He's gotta now block him. All this shit's gotta happen for him to do this. Just have him do this, this. They're all blocked out, just loop him in a hole, 
everything fit. There you go. Yep. Most plays don't work, not because the front side, it's because the back side. For us, I had to change our power this year. I'll tell you why. We couldn't, we had trouble with this, just like you all did too. We're going to go Kong to the to yes side. We, we, we did it okay to the pro. I mean, I mean he came down. He, these, this is how we block it, like this. He would cut him, and he gets in the hole like this. We kick out this guy. Where was the problem? This dude. He scraped, right? This guy also came across, and it was like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Coach, you can draw that back up again. I, I don't know if you ever tried this before. Um, no, we, we, we pulled the tackle. Yeah, dark. Oh, I was going to say you could yeah. you could read the backside three. Yes. And yeah. block the five, block out with the tackle on the five. But you could also could. dart it. You can run. I think you're going to draw a dart. So you're going to block back with the guard and then read the end and pull the tackle. So you're going to run dart. So it's like tackle yeah. iso. Yeah. Yeah. Do that too. Yeah. That's what we do. That's what so. we did. That's what we did. And it worked. We actually, the way we ran it in the run game, run game, we had him here and kick out. We would hand the ball off here and come bend back this way, right? Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? We would hand the ball off here to the left and bend it back. Right. Gotcha. Right? And then yeah. we, would pink, we would pink call it. So, in other words, we would go, you know, you know, hand signal the pink and run off, run, run hiker, run gum, run now with it. So he knows that if he's throwing it, one step back, throw it. That's how he did it. But this actually was better fit. Blocking the three technique out. He went out here um, and we just hit it. I liked it. It was different. What's your tackle doing on that? Is he he's blocking out on the end? No, he, we had him fit in there. We didn't long trap it. No, I'm talking no. about the place, the play side tackle. Was he going down? Yeah. Down. Okay, I was gonna say. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's going down, and then you have the sniffer kicking out the end. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, or it could be if you're doing one back. You know, he's down like this. He's in the hole here like that. If you're doing one back, Bauer. Yeah, and if the back, the tailback's carrying the ball. I got gotcha. you. If you wanted, the fullback could go opposite. Right. If you're yeah. doing one back, Bauer. Yeah, we would call that book. So if I said book to the fullback, he blocks the end wherever he is. So I would say that would be like bench would be power. So I would go bench book. So we would fake, we would get the ball on the left side on a handoff, either pistol or under center, and he bends it back this way. And book to me means bend. So instead of yelling out, hey, bend. I yell out book. They know that book is bent. And we we get a good, we get a good uh we we fuck with the Mike linebacker. Off of that a, same scheme, you could bring your tailback across the cylinder and run that that bash action and read the read this end. So you can yeah. bring him across the cylinder, read this end, and then run your dart with the left tackle coming around. Uh, so uh -huh. you're getting an outside play. If that end crashes in, you can give the tailback the ball coming across the cylinder, or you can have oh, the power. You mean the power read? The it'd be like a it'd be re, so it'd be like bash quarterback bash or bash read, uh, so that the quarter quarterback would be carrying the ball, or you're handing it off to the tailback running uh, an yes. outside zone path. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. off the same blocking scheme. Yeah, that, that's uh, we dabbled with that. We did. Um, I mean, but your fucking did. receivers have to block on the outside to the play yeah. side. <laughs> yeah, we do. I mean, yeah, uh, on that that's play. true. But we play around with that stuff. Um, we're not great at it, but you can tell. I mean, the clips that you have, you're really good at what you really prioritize. And um, you know, that's that. I'm afraid my my coaches now, my whole staff, I, I rehired them. They all coming back and and they want to like put their stamp on the program and 
we've been one losing record the last 11 years. We've been pretty good. Our offense has always been high powered and high tempo and they don't want to do that now. They want to huddle. They want to do everything opposite. I said, Whoa, the head coach is 34 years old. I said, you got something that nobody else has. You're taking over a program that we just fucking beat St. John Vienna at their, like, we're good. Like don't change too much. You change too much. All of a sudden the culture, the kids forget what we were doing that got us here and you ain't going to be able to get that back. Um, you know, like your, your schemes, your philosophy, um, we're not, they're not doing RPOs. I'm like, I can't believe we're saying that. Um, it's just nuts, you know, but I, I mean, I actually conferred, I talked with him. I said, is there anything that you don't want me to say in any of my clinics? And they looked at the playbook and they go, nah, we're good. So, ah, okay. You know, like they're not doing these things. So God bless them. But I think you need RPOs. You know, yeah, I think you do. You know, I mean, do you think this stuff is adaptable? Uh, I, I, I think, you know, at the, at this level, I think it's great because it gives everybody a chance to touch the football. And, yeah. and that's what I think keeps kids coming out and, and build. That's how you build a program. You know, yeah. I, 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 that's what I, at least that's what I think. If you're telling a kid, Hey, listen, I got a chance to catch a pass on every play just about, except for fun go. I mean, it, it, like I said, it makes it sexy. And with this, with this type of uh, right. the culture that's out there today, the type of kid that's out there today, you got to keep him interested. Otherwise, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to play. You know, you're not going to get those basketball kids if, if you're running the ball every fucking every down. You yeah. know, if you have basketball kids, you got to make sure they come out and they're they're successful uh, too. Like you can't come out and I mean they got it right away. When they come out, we teach them the bubble screen, the now screen, the no huddle stuff. They're like, this stuff's fun. Like, all right, you know, gradually we get into thumping and hitting and, and all that stuff. But, I mean, I mean, I think a kid can play football without ever playing football before if he's a receiver. Catch a football. Run. Do this. Like, you can teach that stuff. Yep. You don't need to play I, – I don't believe you need to play football – seven, eight years before you go to high school. No, I don't. Um, again, you got to keep it to a point where they can relate to what you're trying to accomplish with your scheme and then run it. And then run, and, and, and I always time them. Like, people are like, oh, I know, I know what I'm doing. And they go half-ass. And the, I had to stopwatch. And they're so worried about their 40 time. I go, fucking time them. I want to know how fast they get to 10 yards when we're running pin and pull. I want to know how fast they're running when we're running our taco. I want to know how fast that ball is getting out there. And, and we time it. And they started realizing, like, okay, not only do we know what to do, we ran it right, but now we got to run it faster. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So – so if you got to the 10 yard line on an ISO play, whatever it is, it's like, okay, it took 5.7 seconds. Imagine if everybody just got a little faster and we got it to 5.2. Let's from snap to it got there. And that's, that, I, I always harp on that. Like, like, like there's a stop clock behind you. We got to be fast. fast not, not just fast, like fast with the snap, the, 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 the read. And the reaction, that's what it's got to be. I mean, it's a, a whole mech of things. Because if you're fast and they're not reacting fast, you can, you're going to get more yards or a touchdown. But, you know, you kind of, you know, again, us coaches, we kind of talk to the kids like that. And they kind of look at you like, I got to take a shit. You know, like, just like, <laughs> you know, I was like, guys, I'm trying to help you on game day, man. So, you know, it's funny. I, I tell the kids if, if I if I sense that, I tell the kids that um, I told your parents and guardians that we're going to practice sixty minutes or whatever doing this, and I'm going to keep my word, but I will move the clock back. So if we fuck up, we're going to redo it. And we started practice one time. We I did it one time. It never happened again. It was like twenty five minutes into practice, and they were going half ass. 
I blew the whistle. I said, everybody get in the field house. I said, I got, I, I said, I got to keep a promise. And I told them what I'm doing. Let's get back out. Let's take it right from the top. He looked at me and they go, what do, you, what do you mean top? I go, oh, we're going to stretch again. We're gonna, but, but we already did that. Not to my liking. So we're going to redo everything again until we do it right. We had the best practice when we went back on that field. They did not uh, bullshit. I said, we're going to get this amount of minutes in, but we're going to do it the right way. And they didn't fuck up after that. You know, and then the word gets out that the coach is fucking nuts, you know, and, you know, I'm, you know, and I don't give a shit. So if we're ever late, it's because of the kids, you know, that's that. You guys need anything else? Coach, I'm good. I just wanted to say thanks again. And, and I'm looking forward to the next one. And uh, I'm not sure what your topic's going to be, but I'll, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely be a part of it. So thank uh, you. Topic could be, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're, I, I mean, I can just talk run game. I can talk this. I think the RPOs is fun. And we can always, we can always have a section of RPO. Um, you know, here, I, let me show, if you got, if you guys are here, you don't mind, let me show you what I'm playing with. It's a screen game. I'll go on with, my long coach. You just keep talking. Okay. It's a screen game. Um, let me find it. Uh, where is the screen? My SPOs. Okay, here it is. Screens. All right, screen with slip. Now I'm playing around with it, guys. Just, you know, you kind of like, you want to try it out. You know, you see if we can do it. Um, coin bucket is good. Let's see what you got. All right. Oh, this is bullshit. Um, Score of touchdowns. It actually embarrassed us. I shouldn't show you this. But um, I'm going to fucking call these kids up tonight. Like, you embarrass me in these. Uh, all right, what we do is this. <laughs> all right. Do I have any cut ups? Or, they? No, I even. Uh, okay. All right. Let's just say. All right. Let's just do this. Or whatever it is. Or, okay. We're going to do. Um, Slip. What am I doing? We're doing rocket slip or a slip. And, okay, okay. So we're going to run slip. Slip screen to me is this. With a tailback, okay? Well, let's do the tackles. On slip screen, the tackles are going to pass pro and stay on. All right? We're going to invite the pass rush up. Our guards and center and guards are going to block the first down lineman. They're next to and hit him for a two count. Thousand one. Thousand two. So if he's here or here, it doesn't matter. So let's just say he's here. Let's say he's there. Let's just say he's this, whatever. The guard's going to hit thousand one, thousand two, and he's going to get flat and look to kick somebody out, right? And let's say the center is here. Who's the closest one? The nose. So they're both hitting him at the same time. Thousand one, thousand two, and getting there. Oh, my bad. This guy's kicking out. What am I saying? Jesus Christ. He's right, kicking so the guy. The sidewalk. This guy's got the alley. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what I was saying. This guard here is going to hit him. Thousand one, thousand two, push and get in the hole like that. So we're creating some type of, um, you know, thing like this, right? You know what I'm saying? All right. So while they're doing that, the running back takes one, two, three, and then he slides under, he slips underneath. Behind a line of scrimmage. Like that. Mm, mm, bad drawer. All right. All right. Now, that's going to set. So we're going to run now. Um, let's go pop. So we're going to go. Um, we're going to go laser slip. This is called laser. Mean to the left. Laser slip. So if we went laser, we go to the left. We go rocket. We go to the right. Right? So that means on laser rocket, the tackles are always on pass bro. And so we're kicking back and the guards in the center work. Does that make sense? Okay. So here's the guy we're going to read because we're going to be in black and we're in laser. So we're going to go, um, we're going to go laser slip Pepsi. 
So he's going to push here. Again, he's going to run hitch. Boom. He can convert. So he's out. Bobble. Fade. Quarterback gets up. Three quick steps. One, two, three. Got to get depth. If this Mike runs with him, we throw the pop. If he um, blitzes, we throw the pop. If he stays put, we're going to run the slip. So we'll go one, two, three, one, two, and then slip it to the left. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. All right. So let me see if I have something. Okay. Well, something like this. This isn't us, but it's the same concept. He's going to slip to the other side like this while he's doing that. And that, I mean, we have a, we have a screen like that too. But see, while he's doing that, he had a liner down there blocking. So, all right. Watch this. They're slipping to the right, the left, the left. All right. Now, here we are. You know, not, not blocking it well. But again, I'm, I'm experimenting in the summer. I'm experimenting. You can tell by my Hawaiian shirt right here. It's a summer. So we're going to go rocket slip. So we're going to go here. While he's going here, we're doing all the blocking. We didn't block very well. And we're going to run pop. And pop would be here to this side. Tight end's not here because we're not, we're not doing it. But he would pop right here. So let's see how it looked. But you're going to see different people moving. See, the linemen let go of him too quick. You can tell. Guards in, in the center should be really thumping them. They can let go of him too quick. But in a game, Coach, they're going 100 miles an hour, these defensive guys. So the reason why I go slip screen from the backside because we're going to RPO this guy. And I like for him to steal the opposite flat and maybe entice him to go wide that, that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. He's got to be faster on his release yes. because he's yes. not inside side of the screen. Yes. If he yes. was inside not, of the screen, it could be a little bit slower. But If we went the other way, he gets there too quick. We've done this, and it's kind of like – so I like to keep him moving – to get to where he's at here, he didn't know what to do. Like, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? It's like, just fucking move. Jesus Christ. But so I, I'm working at it. Now here, here is um, Fungo. So fullback is here and they're running laser slip. So he's going this way. So he's going to read this guy right here. He's going to drop back. He's going to either throw it or kick back and then throw the slip. There you go. That's what you want, right? And the uh, coaches, I, what I like about this, when you run screens, you're training their quarterback's eyes to set up the screen. Does that make sense? Right. So he should be looking at the – his eyes should be on the read, correct? Yes. Said, yes. Yeah. See what he did. Read. See what Move he did? Your eyes. Coach, you're right. Because when he did this and you occupy him, He's not doing it too quick. Because if we just said slip screen, our quarterback and how many times your quarterback and your running back have to go, do it again. All right. And then somebody will be up, thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, throw. And you practice that so much. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that, but I'm putting his eye somewhere. So he's doing the same thing that the coaches want. That three count, thousand one, thousand, right? You know what I'm saying? So watch his eyes. His eyes, I think this timing was good. Look at that. That's what you want, right? To me, you're setting it all up. And you're hitting parts of the field that are open. That's what I like about this SPO. And, you know, it sounds, look at look, that. Look, look, that's a play. I mean, come on. That's a play. So to me, that's an RPO. So we're reading that dude. There you go. I mean, right? I mean, that's that's pretty cool. It's good stuff. So we're gonna, yeah, he's gonna go left. He's gonna go right. 
And there we go. I love it. It's counter. It's like a counterplay. I'll take that. I'll take that. Look at that. That's pretty good stuff. Pretty stuff. Quarterback's eyes set up the screen, guys. His eyes. Look at him. Look in there. Cool. Look in there. Good. Now, who runs, no, guys? Do you guys run uh, no huddle? Yeah. Okay. Do you ever have like a, a term that makes you get on the ball and run? Let's just say you want to insert something like we want to go for the jugular, hit a post uh, with a dig or a post with a crossing. Do you ever do that? Like uh, a heavy play action, like an ISO and going for the jugular? Big on play action coach, we're more like RPOs or drop backs. Right? No? You don't do it? No, we don't have a lot of play action. We're not really heavy on that. I got to work that in this year. Mm -hmm. We call it, um, let me show it right here. We just go fire, fire, and go lake. Lake is play action. And then we go uh, poker. Post. I, call, I called it pudding, which was post with the big D for, for uh, dig. But poker is a chance. We roll the dice. We're going for the post. Where is it? Let me just show this shit. Um, right here it is. So, and we do it out of jet suite. We do it out of whatever. Um, and th this was just, he threw this behind him. Still scored a touchdown. Again, it's athletes being athletes. That's not a great play, but he scored a touchdown. <laughs> uh, here's one. The, uh, here is this kid's at Penn State, and I, I said I want to send a message to every team we're playing. We're gonna every scrimmage, we're gonna hit this this play. We called it search. <laughs> this is our favorite play, Coach. Our favorite play against Cover Two is this. Against Cover Two, I love it. We go search. We coach everybody. The safeties get tight, assholes get real tight. Watch out for this play. So what we do is we push and run a corner, All right? He gets underneath, allows him to make his break, and then steals oh, the move. Yeah. That's dirty, yeah. He runs the corner. He runs the drag. And what we do is we read him to him to him. And our, basically, this is the only scheme where we basically say, take that safety, bring him to the other side. And that's what we do. Coach, cover two. These guys go like this. We're fucking hitting this guy. Yeah. But we're in the corner first. So watch this. So we we, we, we play around and said, all right, you know, we're going to do this. Okay. Watch how open these guys get. Like, oops. There you go. And that's our favorite cover two. But this is what we do when we go lake. So we would go, whatever lefty, it would be called river. We slide to the right. And I would just go river search. You know, okay. So with this quarterback, our concepts would be on this side. With a righty, it would be on this side. So we would go river search. Linemen are sliding to the right. It's the same blocking like taco, except it's pass bro. It's me in to the backside, zone to the play side. River, river, search. Fake it. Look at that. It's fucking great. All right. He was there. Um, now we do it here. Again, it's this first scrimmage. Good fake. Oh, this isn't, oh, this is just our post. He just wasn't watching the guy. Touchdown. All right. Now we're, do, now we're doing it again. Set, this is, our first scrimmage of that season uh, with that kid from Penn State. So we're just going to go river, search, good fake. You know, just stuff like that. Yep. You know, um, uh, again, we would just call, we would just call this now lake because 
they're, they're sliding to the left. We would fake our zone. Bang. We're going to run post. And then we're going to run this. Nice. Yeah. So if you're going fast, you can yell it out. Now, we, we run other concepts. We'll call this uh, soap, which is a snake and a pose. So that's the post and it's a snake. But every time we're always going to have some type of post and the backside guy does a drag. You know, we just get on the ball and just do it. Our kids are confident with it. Good fake. We were in pistol. Um, you know, the concepts are, you know, just touchdown toward tight end. Good fake. I'm just saying, you said, coach, you said you're no huddle. So by yeah. you saying you're no huddle, that's all I'm saying is, okay, so I'm just saying you just ran a play, you ran ISO, mm -hmm. where you mm -hmm. ran spin and pull, you know, fire, fire, you know, river, uh, lake, lake. And then we call the, the concept, which is a post. If it's one man, it is, sir, uh, it's poker. If it's two, two guys on that side, we'll go a post with a, with a wheel route. Um, or we can run that one. Con now, here we're going jet sweep. Same concept. Post in a day. Bang. Threw it a little late, but, you know. Um, I like that. You know, yeah, I mean, you could do it out of this, which is faking a handoff, doing that. Um, wait, where is it? This stuff. It's... All right, here's I touched. I mean, this guy never played quarterback for us here. Throws it in there. So yeah, I mean, whatever you guys want to talk about next, we can figure it out. You you have a, we have each other's email, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know whatever, whatever. Figure this out. Um, when do you guys start football? Uh, our summer starts, I think, here in like two, three weeks. I think the first. Really? Well, it depends on where I end up. I got a uh, talking to a couple schools right now. So one's trying to poach me from my current school. Wait, wait who's saying that? I didn't see the name. Who is that? Oh, that's me, Coach Blue. Okay. Where are you from? I'm in California. Uh, by Matter Day? No, no, up north by like De La. But, but De La Salle? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Wow. Are you by that uh, um, that reality show that... that um, oh, Lady? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I coached a couple kids that went to Laney. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, you don't know where you're at yet, right? No, not yet. Um, all right, well, I got a verbal from the, from the new school. I'm just going to see if it's a better opportunity than the current school. So then I'll figure it out. I um, Yeah, I did some interviewing. Um, I don't know why I did, but I turned it down. It was, yeah. Uh, wasn't ready to do it. Um, yeah. Are you taking the season off, Coach? Is that what you said? I had people asking me to be OCs and all that, but yeah, I sat down for a reason. My health, um, yeah, but I got cleared. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see myself coaching anywhere else. Um, you know, yeah, no, I hear that. Um, I, I yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'll be bored. I think. I mean, I do, I do a talk show, um, for football. Um, I'll probably do something with recruiting for kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I put, I put 64 kids in, into colleges in 14 varsity seasons. Um, nice. the one season I didn't, we didn't have a senior class. That's why I didn't do it. Well, I mean, we've, yeah, I mean, we had like a lot of kids getting scholarships, all different levels. Mm -hmm. That's, I, I do like that stuff. I do yeah. like help, helping people out. Right. Yeah, it's exciting to see uh see where they go. I got uh my quarterback this year. He's uh he committed. He's a uh, preferred to Oregon State. Ooh. Did Washington recruit him? No. Um, 
the guy before him went to Washington for baseball. He probably could have been dual sport, but he How about baseball. Oregon? No. No, we don't get, we're not we're not that fast coach and he Wait, yeah. what's the difference between Oregon State and Oregon? Uh, uh speed? <laughs> There's a big difference? I mean, I think I think Oregon looks for fast guys. They look for real fast guys. I think Oregon Oregon State they I think they're, Mario, they're a little little Mario, below there. Mario Cristobal, mm-hmm. when I stepped down, messaged me. He did. Wow. Um, yeah, no, Mario Cristobal, when he was at Alabama, recruited that big lineman. Um, when I had and that kid Bowen, Manny Bowen, he was a mm-hmm. stud. Manny Bowen was uh, went to Penn State. Um, yeah, so those guys kept in touch with me. Uh, nice. Wherever he's been at, Mario Cristobal. Oh, weird. Like, I asked him one time, I said, do you need a um, tight end or line or whatever it was? And he's like, mm-hmm. he's here he messaging me on on, um, on a, um, you know, on, on the phone. Um, you know, so it's good. You keep good connections. Like, Phil Lago just messaged me this morning. He wants to get a house on the island for a week, which is right around the corner from me. So he's messaging me. I've known him. It's nice that you got connections that help you out with stuff like this all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Because then that kids are all getting helped out because of the connections that you made. Um, So that's good stuff. So, so this stuff was okay. No, this stuff was great coach. No, I'm always, you know, always trying to look to, well, I'm always looking to shrink the playbook (laughs) because like we talked about at the beginning, you know, it's just, it gets too big. So you know, I, I do try to simplify, package a lot of my stuff. Um, I'm going to show you another thing. You got a front second. side, I'm blocking. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you my playbook. Um, where did I put it? Uh, let me see. Um, what am I going to say to you guys? Uh, let me show you what I did. Uh, uh, Can you see that? Uh, I see a white whiteboard. Looks like white screen. All right, all right let me change. It. Change it. Go. Uh, how do I go to? Oh, sh- uh, share, share. New share. There we go. All right. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, PowerPoint. Here's my playbook. Um, doesn't have every every scheme, but I did what the kids needed to know. So how would I do this? Uh, view. Oh, here it is. View. Oh, wait, for a regular. Oh, slideshow. Play from start. Okay, here we go. So um, that's our field. So we would go. Right there. Okay. So then I have it to um, uh, hyperlink. So you can go to different things. Right, right. Oh, uh, like our RPOs. Click mm-hmm. it. Goes to that. You got your stuff there. Um, you know, it keeps, it looks organized. So yeah. it's everything. I don't have clips in it, though. Right. I can always send this to you guys, this stuff. Uh, no, yeah, I would, I would love that, coach. Yeah, you send that over. Yeah, there was something I had to say to you guys. Um, my whole five step drop stuff, how we pass, bro. I know you said you guys throw a lot. What's your What's your top concepts? Oh yeah. Um, all right, hold on. Let me show you. My top concepts is we do it a million times. I call it slide. Now, hold on. Wait, hold on. Get out of here. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Okay, so I have to go new share. Go here. So, are you a five step drop? Uh, we're in gun, so we, we usually take three. Yeah, yeah, that's why I meant like five step route. Yeah, Can yeah, yeah, see- yeah, yeah. Can you see this? Yeah, I got you, Coach. Uh, so, my favorite schemes is the choice route. Out of three by one? Mm hmm. I, I like two by two because okay. I have an answer for everything. Right. It's just me. 
I, I mean, I have a bunch of different schemes I've run through the years and I figure out what I'm choice to me, how we teach it. It's almost like a pop. So if we go 90 slide, 90s to the left, slide to me is this, seven yard out. And he's getting the outside. So these guys are sliding to the sideline. So he's sliding out. And he's sliding right down the line. So it's an out and feed. Mm -hmm. Then we go wide choice. The tight end releases. Okay. And he pushes to seven, eight yards. And then he either runs hard to the post or runs a deep stick. That's it. He's got a choice. The receiver to the side we're running the choice runs a fade. When the running back here is choice, he free swings. There's your outs. Right. The quarterback, which side to go to? If he has two to this side, he throws to here. If they have three, like this, mm -hmm. and the Sam, and he's out like here, right? Yep. We're going to go to this side and just read him to him. That's all we do. So he knows pre snap what side he's working. Oh, he does. Yeah. That's it. So we're, now here he is. So he's going to go to the, to the bottom which is a fade next to the choice. He's going to throw the fade. But every, I got the receivers all going to spots. Um, right. Now we're going to hit the tight end on a choice because they got too many guys to the top. Right. You said it, what was my favorite scheme? This is my favorite. Watch this. Bang. That's what we want, right? Nice. That's sweet when you hit in the middle. And are you just teaching the Y to work off of the leverage of that, that backer? Mm -hmm. the, the tight end? Yeah, the tight end. We tell them if he cannot get to the middle of the field, just run it out. Oh. He does not if he does not like the middle of the field, just run mm -hmm. it out. Run it out, run it out. Now here's the guy, the same side as the choice. We hit the fade. You know? Now, is your that slide? Is that is that the same as your off? You know, yeah, your, it is. It okay. is, but it's a little deeper. Okay. Well, we yeah, have multiple. On. We have multiple names for things, but I don't want people to keep hearing the same thing. Gotcha. Look, this is what you want, right? It's yep. Simple. That's our favorite thing. It gets the kids the ball in space. Um, so it almost turns into Y cross if he comes, yes, if he is. goes in there. Yes. Um, levels is a huge play for us. Um, I'm talking. You want like high high efficiency throws? Uh, yeah. Again, I'm trying to string my playbook. I think we got too many. We got too many concepts, and I I'm really debating on putting in mesh this year, but I don't know if that's too expensive. Um, that's our levels. That's our levels right there. That's it. You have hitches or fades to the outside. The, mm -hmm. the quarterback goes on a pre-snap thing. All right. So we crop the picture. Yeah. Can we throw the hitch? Yeah. Yeah. We can catch one step and throw the outside. All right. Um, if, can we throw the fade if it's rolled up? If you like the odds? One quick step, throw the fade. All right. If you want the inside, you gotta take three steps. One, two, three. Right. And right. you're reading, you're reading one to two. Now, I'm gonna give you a cheat code. If there is a linebacker that is outside, outside of the tight end, mm -hmm. go to the outside. Because it's cover three. Because the, this yeah. guy right here is gonna run into this guy who's there. So right. it won't be open. Right. Okay? We don't. Do that. So, if he's not there, and they're in cover two like this, we're going in the box because there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to read this now, and then we're going to throw it to him and let him run down the sideline. We have fun with this shit. Good, good. So there's his reads. Yeah, I was going to run um, instead of those hitches on the outside. I was going to run outs this year. Outs? But, yeah, but 
Okay. I like I do like the hitches because it's okay. it's a more high high percentage throw. Cool. All right. I mean, listen, we could talk another time about if you guys wanted to say, hey, let's talk about this, talk about that. I I would love to do it. Like five step. Um, you know, our sprint game, the way we call our uh, we call our routes, everything, coach, everything's so simple. Yeah. But our core, like like. Our combo routes, like we'll call it off, we'll call it cab. We emphasize it. Big C, uh, big B, corner mm -hmm. bench. That's how they remember, corner bench. I mean, if we go like this, so snake post, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. That's how they remember it. And you, you know, and you said you call it, right? You don't signal anything. I just yell it out. Yeah. Uh, if I want to see, if we want to run sprint, in, in our words, we would go sprint, yes. Um, uh, let's just say cab, sprint, yes, cab. Mm -hmm. But in no huddle, I would call that run, run, yes, cab. Teams don't know what the fuck we're doing. Run is sprint. So yeah. me and suddenly going sprint, I go run yes cab, run yes cab. And the way we teach our thing is we have a built-in uh, screen, a built-in. So our linemen are here. Let's say we're doing it. So we're gonna run, run no. Let's go run no, um, cab. Well. He's going to run a um, the bench. He runs the corner. We're going to go to the left side. Now, here's the rep. He blocks here. What does he do? This is what he does. So, I'm a receiver. If I'm going to be on the right and we're sprinting the left, I know I ain't getting the football. Mm -hmm. I, there's no way. So, the way I teach it is he runs an iso route. Hitch. Slant. Fade. So linemen are all blocking it this way. Mm -hmm. Trying to hitch, slant, fade, and these guys are demanding the ball on a sprint. Yep. So the quarterback, if he does not think the sprint's open, he's going to take one step back and throw the ball to this side while yep. everybody's doing sprint. Right. If he doesn't think that we can catch the ball here, he's going to catch it and go. And then he's going to do his read. Is Y in the protection or is he running across? No, he's blocking. Okay. And your formations, coach, are you are you yelling those out too? Yeah, yeah. I don't care if they hear it. Like I don't care. Like I don't need to disguise the name spread. Like, like, okay, like you know we're gonna be in spread when we line up. So why have a different name for it? You know? So yeah. That's just me. I I've done checkerboards. I actually have pictures of it. I didn't bring it with me. But let's just say here is the color. Let's say this was uh, this was a color. The color uh, blue, uh, pink. Yeah. We would have an NFL logo here, a celebrity, and then maybe a fast food thing right here. Mm -hmm. All the quarterback sees is a color. That's it. Has nothing to do with the play, just where your eyes are. We, we fuck around with the defense. Yeah, I like that. Right? Yeah. It's awesome. During practice, we might have it so the quarterback sees the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the, the player's like, what does this mean? Don't worry about it. No, tell <laughs> us. Right? I like that, Coach. You have some people going, oh, every time he puts an NFL thing up there, mm -hmm. it's uh, this play. It has nothing to do with it. <laughs> right? My thing is, okay, overplay that then, and then see what we do. We run it. So, right. Yep. So I'll let you guys go. That's um, good stuff, what Coach. Time appreciate it for you guys. Uh, it's almost 10 over here. I'm, in a, I'm actually in Denver right now. Cool. Good. Is John still here? Yeah, hey. Coach. What's up? How you doing? Coach, where are you from? Haverhill, uh, I coach at Haverhill, Mass. I live in southern New Hampshire. Southern, Southern New Hampshire. 
Hampshire. And Carmine, where are you from? I'm the uh, Canadian, St. St. Francis Catholic. Oh, with 12, with 12 players. Last game over here, coach. You'd love it. I mean, yeah. An extra player? <laughs> extra yeah. player. Extra receiver. You have, less, you have less parents complaining their kids ain't playing. That's right. Play. <laughs> That's right. Fields wider, too. A lot of speed. I'll tell you what, Carmine, I would love to hear um, some things how you guys do it with 12 people. <laughs> Seriously. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, the reason why I'm sitting in on some of these is because some of our coaches are old school and it's a three down game too. So you throw an incompletion on first down, you're second and 10, you're in trouble already. Wow. Cause you're coach. You can do RPOs with 12 people, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I've, I've introduced that to the team last year and they're just, they loved it. Kids loved it. Um, get away from the old power blocking game. And, and there, there's some guys that are still uh, old school here. So getting the, getting head coaches to realize there's a new world out there. Um, yeah. It's tough, tough to do. A lot of resentment to it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a task. It's fun, but our, our school's small. So kids are playing offense. A lot of them are, a lot of the studs are playing defense as well. So it's a, it's a challenge at our school. We may get 35 to 40 kids. If we're lucky. Wow. Yeah. It's a small school. I remember those days. Yeah. How is the salary for coaches in, in Connecticut, uh, Canada? Most, most of the coaches do it for nothing. Wow. Like they, a school won't go hire a head football coach. It's either somebody who's teaching, the phys ed coach, whatever, or the phys ed teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm a volunteer, to be honest with you. Offensive coordinator, volunteer. Wow. Yeah. A lot of people go to games. Uh, depends. You play. You play a rival team. You'll get a. You'll get a, a good. A good crowd, but most of the time, not. Not many. What's a good crowd? How many? Uh. Boy, I think uh, when we play Holy Cross, it's probably 700. It's not. Oh, you don't, you don't get like a thousand? No, no. no. We, we, we get in our, in our town, like 5,000 people at some games. Yeah. We, we all, I always admire that. It's, that would be fun. That um, what? I mean, yeah. Um, again, if you're winning more than you do, you get more people. Yeah, the emphasis on football, it's its not as, as big here. I'll be honest with you. It's not that right. we don't love the game. It's, uh, you know, kids go to university to, for academics. Football secondary. Scholarships aren't, um, there's not there's not a big scholarship program for football or athletics in general. Huh. Yeah, it's a different, little bit of a different world here. It's amazing. Yet you're so close to us. Yeah. Uh, let's not forget the Great Cup is probably the oldest football trophy around, though. I know. <laughs> Doug Flutie played there. Like 110 years or something. Yeah, I mean, Doug Flutie played there. I mean, he's a legend. Yeah. Ferragamo right? played here, and he couldn't handle the extra man. He threw more interceptions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize he'd do that. Uh, Warren Moon. It was a legend. Uh, Moon, yeah, Moon started here and, and went south. And what? Moon started here in Edmonton and then went south to Houston. Who is the biggest football player name that played in the, in Canada? Boy, I don't know. The Rocket played here, eh? Rocket Ishmael played here. Um, really? Yeah, he played for Toronto. Uh, biggest football player that played here? Manziel. Who? Manziel. Uh, Manziel tried it, but he wasn't yeah. he wasn't good. <laughs> I yeah, I mean Ferragamo came over and, and Flutie. I yeah, I'd say Rocket. Rocket probably be the biggest. Wow. The game was perfect for Rocket though. Big a lo lot of speed. I would like to Google up like maybe if maybe if I could I Google up like Canada football games and see 12 people. Uh, you could check out the CFL. There's probably a lot of points, a lot of scoring. 
Different rules. I might I might look it up later today. Coach, end zone's 25 yards. That, that Damn. I know. Oh, shit. Field's 110 yards long. That's but like, I don't like the goalpost being so close. No, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, it's nice when you're an OC. I run picks off the goalpost. <laughs> <laughs> when you run a post, does that mean you hit the post? Or? <laughs> Good target for our players to understand. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I guess you can use picks for that. Right? Oh, yeah. I, I run players off the goalposts all the time. Is it like that in high school, too, the same field? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. How many kids are actually running into the goalpost? <laughs> no, they'll <laughs> stop before they get to the goalpost. Our, <laughs> our guys are rubbing them off the posts, kind of. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I bet that would make a highlight somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That is hilarious. Um. It's a fun game, though. It's a real fun game. Yeah. That's uh, that's good stuff. Wow. Now, you don't play anybody in the United States, do you? No. I, the rules would, would screw them all up. I mean, I don't think you guys could come up here and play our rules. Yeah. Do you think it would be harder for us to come to you or you to come to us? I think it'd be harder for you to come to us. I, right. I, I see the U.S. game as a little more power. Um, you know, I see our game as a uh, speed game. Really? Fast. Like you can have multiple guys in motion, right? Pre-snap? Yeah, towards line of scrimmage for sure. Everybody can go. That's what all I'm every, saying. Like it's, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, they get a running start. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of things you can do. But the tight end isn't as big, right? Uh, it's more of a kind of a s slot back. You're, you're probably playing with one running back, five five receivers. Yeah. If you put in a tight end, would you would would you be would you dominate there, or would it be would it get lost? If you got a good tight end, you could you could really do some damage there. But most of the time, they get lost. Huh. Why? Too many people on a field? <laughs> well, it's just too fast. Um, so. To attack, you want to you want to get your speed out there, right? You want to get guys that are out there that uh -huh. can run quick routes and play fast. But we got we got a pretty good tight end at our school that we use. It's pretty smart. They still get recruited by colleges in the United States, right? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a big thing here. Yeah, there's a lot of guys going south. How far away are you from um, Niagara Falls? <laughs> Five minutes. No, I'm about 15 minutes. Oh, up, wow. I'm about uh, four, 30 minutes from Buffalo. So you're by that. It's really beautiful. When you go over Niagara Falls, it's like a carnival. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different world. Yeah. It's a nice really? casino and, you know, yeah. hotels. Beautiful. A lot you of guys talent in Toronto. There's a lot of talent what? in Toronto. A lot of talent, you said? A lot of talent, yeah. You play at, on a Fridays or Saturdays? Uh, Thursday or Friday. Okay, good. Yeah. They're not always night games. There's uh, afternoon games mostly. It's really? Not, yeah, it's just not uh, – it's not structured like you. You know, you got high school Friday, college Saturday, and professional on Sunday. Uh -huh. here, it's, here it's all over the place. Oh, all right. I got a split right now. Um, what day is today? Friday. Um, Thursday, Coach. Yeah, it's Thursday. Well, it's Friday now. Maybe. Well, it's Friday now for you guys. <laughs> no, eight maybe, minutes. Maybe yeah. Maybe I'll do something Saturday or Sunday, something, uh, like a run game or something. Um, you know what's funny? I gave that list for Google Forms. Uh-huh. And Leslie Frazier. Do you know who Leslie Frazier? That sounds familiar. The D coordinator for Buffalo Bills. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he registered. Not, but I'm a Cowboy fan, so I don't really follow him. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if he was coming out. Like, how the hell did you get? Which site did you see my stuff on? Facebook. Facebook. I know. Which one? Oh, Facebook. Oh. Uh, it's hard to tell. There's too too many groups, Coach. 
Yeah. Oh, so you are, you're on all of them then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Offense, spread. I'm yeah. in split back veer still. Um, Run. O line, D line. What's what's the other ones called? O line, D line. O line, D line, brother. Well, I'm a line guy, coach. So I just coach. I just coach the other guys too. But it's uh, just called O line, D line. O line, D line, brotherhood. Okay. And then I think I'm in the power spread. Uh, mm -hmm. Spread offense. What's the other yep. one? Ron wing McKee. Tee, shotgun wing T. Ron, Ron Mackey. Ron Who? Mackey, yeah. Yeah, Mackey. Mackey, is that how you say it? Ron yeah, Mackey. Yeah. Even though there's no A. Well, that's how he says it, so that's how I say it. Oh, yeah. Coach Mackey. That's right. He does say it. Yeah. Ron Mackey, he has that. What is, is that the spread offense? or? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah more, of a, more of an air raid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. That's one. Cool. I mean, uh, all right. So, yeah, I'll think about what I want to do. Um, maybe I'll do sprint game. You know, all the stuff we do with sprint. Sounds good. Coach, I might so, start I might start calling it out instead of signaling because it's hard thinking of signals, man. No, no. Call, don't, yeah, call it out. Yeah, I got it. I, I, mean, <laughs> I oh, spent a lot of time trying to think of signals, man. No, it's it's no, frustrating. No, no. That that slows you down. Like, like, how do you call? Like, how do you call a play? Do you call it with a number? Do you buzzword it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, no, I mean, I call. I I come up with a signal for every play we got. Every every word we have has a signal, and it's not like it's not crazy because I try to do the least possible. So. If like say if we're running like sprint like like flood right three by one flood, then if we're in two by two, if I just call flood, they know that that motion's built in to get to three by one. So I'm not going to signal motion. So I just teach it that way, but I still have to come up with a signal for everything. I know, but let's just say you're talking to kids in a classroom. How do you yeah, call yeah. you call run flood? What does it in sound like? Yeah, what does it sound like? Uh, uh, trips right 61. So you number it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we number the holes, yeah. So the quarterback is telling the line the number, but all the skills are getting the, the hand signals. Okay. So is your, what is your block in like a man slide type of thing? Uh, well, on zone, we, we lock the backside because that's where we RPO second level off of. Um, if we're running like, first level like GT um, or trap, um, then we'll use 30s off of that. So uh, we run gap and zone lock. Can you give 60 a buzzword? Like, uh, you mean like uh, kind of turn it into a play action? Yeah, like how does it, how do you know what the play side is or weak side? Oh, cause 60, the so odds is left, evens is right. So you can call something like Lake River. Yeah, Maybe, yeah, yeah. Just to make it yeah. Simple. So for me, I don't, I don't call it. I don't. So inside zone is the same signal, but then if I wanted to go left, I'll just tap my left wrist, and they know okay, we're going to left. That's the, that's that's how I flip the play. So I don't have to create exactly, you know, a brand new thing. It's just everything's going to the right until unless I tap left. You gotta. You have to write down your schemes down, and then say, "Let me build a menu." Yes. How I'm gonna call it. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, it's all very our, time consuming. Yeah, no, I don't. It, I don't know if it is as much. Like, what do you call? Okay. Like, do you run zone? What's your top three run plays? Um. The before this year was GT. Um, guard trap. Yeah, guard guard tackle counter, counter tray. Okay, so so like a hammer or scissor. Yeah, we run that, and then um, counter right. Yeah, counter. Go ahead. And then uh, outside zone because we RPO the backside, basically mm -hmm. like it's like your pop. So that would be like that'd be like Hawaii. Yeah, um, and then. Uh, we brought 
power power read basically like inverted. So, what did you call that bench? What I don't know what you called. What's it. a power read? Power read is uh basically like we're we're going sweep action and we're reading that front side DN. Oh, so, so you're power, right. power yeah. What about power read? Yeah, yeah. I actually call that option because we don't option. Um, but I call. <laughs> Do, well, yeah. So I use that. I use that blocking scheme for everything. So I use that that power read power? scheme for, yeah. What do you call power? What do you call power? Uh, we don't run power. If we if we ran power, we would. I would just have a signal for that, and it would be the same blocking scheme that we run power read. The same blocking hmm. scheme that we run uh, shovel. So what, what's the read play called? Like, how would you call that? Uh, I would just like I'm reading a book. Oh, so and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, so, so, so it's reading is the the way your kids remember it, right? Reading for for power. If I'm if I'm yeah, if the if the dive back if the running back is inside is inside, yeah, then it's then it's read. If it's if it's power read, then I go hat because I physically had to put my hat on the ground to make sure the running back ran around it. So I just I called it hat because I keep telling them get outside the hat because they would always try to cut it up like it was outside zone. So I want them to be flatter. So I put my hat out there and I said, this is going to be called hat. Okay. I guess you got to have a storyline to why you call it. Like write down all your run plays. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, just, I mean, do you run, do you run waggle? Yeah. Yeah. We run waggle. What do you call we just, it? It looks like a tail, like a tail wagon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ours is dog. Yeah, same shit. Mm -hmm. Say yeah. dog. Yeah. And a waggle. You're right. Um, but I, but I like it's one less step if I can just say it. You know, <laughs> like I don't have to signal it. I could just say it instead of spending yeah. time thinking of okay, how no, would I signal saying, this word? You call it tail. You call it dog. Right. Right. Um, right. Like yeah, you're right. They ain't gonna know what that is. Right. And then your combo routes, it would set. So, so how would you tell if it's, you're going right or left? What do you feel comfortable calling it? Like, um, like what what would be your directional call? Uh, everything's to the right unless I tap my left wrist. No, but if you want to yell it out. Oh. Uh, I don't know. East west. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It could be east, west, hot, cold, yes, yeah. no. Right. Yes, right. no has been very good to us. Um, I don't think you have to get so crazy with it. No, no, I, I don't think so either. I just, I don't know. I don't like, so, I yell so enough. <laughs> yeah, if you're running dog, yes, and then yeah. you put the combo route in. Yeah. Yeah, dog, dog yes, yes, and then you're running, what's that? What do you call that? Yeah. Yeah. That's how we would say, hey, dog, yes, cab. Yeah. It's that simple, that fluid, uh, and then you go, and then you do it. Um, I like, I like that because you can you can change it. You can pick, you like you said, you have a menu, and you can change it. Yes. You have a me That's what I do. I have a menu for my coaches. So we can go, dog, yes, cab, dog, yes, Holly, mm -hmm. uh, dog, yes, you know, I mean, Charlie. Yeah. He's got names for it. Yeah. If I want to run if I want to reverse, I go dog yes moon. Dog yes moon. Moon is the moonwalk. He's going backwards. Oh, backwards. It's a reverse. I got you. It's a reverse. Um, if I want to fake the reverse and run a post, I go dog yes sucker. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, simple. Maybe I'll do the, the waggle stuff, but that, that's. You know, there's many different ways. Yeah, I like that. I think I, I just because when I started signaling stuff, I, I wanted to make it as simple as possible. Um, for for the so everything's packaged. You know, like yes. this is what you do on this. But when you have a menu, then all they have to know is okay, these are my jobs on whatever these things are, and then you could just adjust them as necessary. A lot of people yeah. like put like themes like if yeah. we run runs. I don't I, I don't do that. I just inside zone is Texas. Texas is an area. It's it's in the middle of the country. It's 
Texas. Mm. I can handle it that way. Yeah. If I want to bring something outside, it's Hawaii. I just go, you! <laughs> they laugh. Or I can say Hawaii. So, you know, it just, they have fun and with it. Do, yeah. do teams ever pick up on your yes, no? No. They don't. They don't. But I can call it hot, cold, um, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, boy, girl, you know? I mean, I don't know. How does the f – go ahead, Coach. No, I was just going to say I like the method. Kiss. I always say kiss. Yeah, yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. I, ours is all numbers as well, and it's tough for the kids to memorize. It's – end right. up blowing plays because one guy's going the wrong way or, you know, the well, blocks are the right well, – yeah. If you said 42 ISO, to me, that's like saying – you're saying it in two different languages. It's the same thing. Because so one at one point you're saying you want the four back to go in the two hole, mm -hmm. and then when you say ISO, you're basically running that concept too. So yeah, yeah. Why can't you just say ISO? <laughs> to me, I, ISO can hit A or B gap depending on the play of where where the defenders are. I again, you limit you're limiting your verbiage, and you know that's like saying dog sprint yes like or just you're saying it twice like you don't need to do that the kids are resilient they'll remember what you teach right Whatever. coach have any of your kids come up with words yes for plays you know what i mean uh, yeah. yeah yeah they'll well like there'll be times you know i i'm i'm known for pretty good stuff with that um yeah they'll make a suggestion because if they can re if they'll remember that yeah. Right. Then, then okay, we'll call that. Yeah, That's what okay. I do with my signals sometimes. Like I'll I'll leave it up to them. I'll say, hey, this is what we're putting in. Come up with a signal for it. Tell me by the end of the day. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. They'll they'll have fun with it. If you give yeah. some kids some ownership, they'll like that. Coach, how are you communicating to the far sideline? Those receivers. They hear me. We echo it out. <laughs> okay. You guys play we telephone. Echo it out, but within that, coach, we hand signal. Like, like, I mean, like, it's like we've built in that these kids know how to hand signal each other. These kids do dummy calls to each other that they created. <laughs> it's like, seriously, like they're constantly awesome. saying, we constantly saying gum and now and this and that, like, like to the point where it's like enough, you know, the other team doesn't listen. <laughs> right. We, we yeah. call dumb stuff. Um, but yeah, they have fun with it. That's the thing. They seem to like it. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I, I, might, million, I might switch to that. If you have a million ways to call something, that's good. But yeah. don't bottle the kids up like, hey, we can call it this, we can call it that, we can call it this, we can call it that. Now they're remembering the same scheme for di four different things when they could be figuring out something else to learn, you know, just. They're like sponges. If you occupy them too much, they won't absorb the next document that you want. Right. Right. Um, I mean, you could actually say, here's our place in a Google Docs and say, come up with some buzzwords and we'll, we'll figure something out. Yeah. Or you give it to a couple kids. Yeah. That maybe you didn't want to do it to all the kids. Maybe a couple of your leaders say, hey, Here's some plays I want to run. Give me some ideas of how I can call it out loud where only we understand the language. Mm -hmm. And have fun with it. You know? To me, that's not a big thing. Yeah, no, it's not. You know? I mean, I mean, if you called everything numbers, to me, I think that would be a way they wouldn't pick things up. Hey, 63, 72. Yeah. But, but to, to, to me, it's hard to process the numbers. It is. I mean, your words, your verbiage is storyline based. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you run pitch, you can call it baseball. You can um, slider. Um, well, again, the, those numbers only go to the line. The receivers don't know what the numbers mean because they get the concepts. So yeah. again, all the skills are off of off of hand signals, so they just know what they're supposed to do when they see something, and then 
line. I told them, don't even look at the signals. I don't want you to know them. I want you to know the line calls, which are all numbers. So I'm not trying to overload either either group, you know. What is it like? Yeah, numbers. We took those things out years ago, but you know, I to me, a lot of special ed kids would get confused with the numbers. They get they get confused when you hear shit like that, like math. They don't like they don't like numbers. <laughs> well, I'm a math guy. That's probably why. <laughs> um, I mean, the only numbers we do is with our, our uh, protection. We'll run 90 or 80s. Uh -huh. I will call it 80. I will call it 90. I mean, they used to tell me, the coaches, give it a theme, the 90s. I'm like, these kids don't know what fucking themes. Call it 90 <laughs> slide. 90 slide. They didn't know. Teams didn't know. Yeah. We average just a couple yards under 300 yards a game for 15 straight years. So that's like with all the years together. So, um, and we've been consistent for the most part, you know, with this stuff. Getting your point across to the kids. Right. Right? Right. Well, I guess the, the numbering system doesn't work for you guys because how much gap do you guys actually run? I mean, a gap? Yeah. Yeah, we run power. Yeah, but oh. is he is he so is he going to B gap or will it hit A sometimes? The tailback? No, well, yeah, the well the puller when you're running power. Oh, it depends where the hole is. That's what I'm saying. It, so. He yeah, he finds the hole and gets yeah. in there. You know, when we run hammer, we run power, it's the same blocking. On the front side, it's just the back side's a little different. So it's easy to remember. Uh -huh. You know? Uh -huh. So, all right. Um, I'll, I'll contact you guys in an email again. I appreciate it. Sounds good. Uh, appreciate it, Coach. We'll come, up, we'll come up with another whatever. I mean, if I pick a theme and I'm not good with it, we can just go to another one the next time. Yeah. And if you... Uh... If you send out that that PowerPoint, that that'd be dope. Yeah, send me an email, and then I, right. I got it. Um, I will. Yeah, PowerPoint, the playbook. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was the one I had going into this year. So it's not all my schemes ever, but it's it's something. Yeah. No, I just I just want to take a look at it again. I'm trying to shrink it, so yeah. um, I might take one or two things, but I'm not trying to revamp the. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel over here. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do the screens with the pops. This uh, I didn't do the slip screen with it. I didn't think our guys could master it that much, so I took it out. Yeah. Um, I didn't, so. Um, we run yeah, our so swing screen with our with our tunnel. The what screen? Swing, so swing screen with the running back and then we're going to tunnel to the opposite side. So we got a fast, fast on the swing and then if it doesn't look good, then he comes back to that tunnel. I like it. Yeah. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. All right, I appreciate it, coach. See you, coach. Take care. Later. Thanks a lot, coach. Yep. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, coach. How do you get that background? It's a virtual background, the Canadian coach. Uh, I got to do <laughs> yeah. What? So you in, just... in your in your Zoom, you have to go in a in the setting, set up a virtual background. If you go down by your on the bottom left, where where the video camera is, there's a little arrow next to the video camera. Yeah. You click that, and it says choose virtual background. Oh wow. Yeah. And where, how do I get the back? Oh okay. Oh, I do got this. But okay, so but how do I make it good? I I I can't help you with that. I'm not a tech guy, coach. I'm gonna play around with it. <laughs> yeah, that's the best thing to do. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. All uh, right. Thanks, thanks, coach.
All right. Thanks, Coach. I shot off that email. All right. See you later. All right. Thanks. <clears throat>